can start sir good morning one and all i am madhumohan r head department of interdisciplinary research and also kcst ip sir take this great opportunity to welcome all in their absentia i welcome our chairman dr kr paramahamsa sir vice chairperson ms geeta paramahamsa uh, president ms monica kalori and uh, executive vice president mr rahul kalori sir i also welcome dr k m babu sir the director of amc group of institutions who has always been a great motive behind all such initiatives and uh, i welcome all our principals of amc engineering college and also amc degree college dr girisha c and uh, dr prakash dhuri respectively and i also welcome all deans hod's staffs most importantly i welcome the beneficiary young minds and uh, future assets of this country the students and other valuable participants we in amc believe in the mantra yatra guru pujyante ramante tatra gnana so i welcome today's gurus of this one day workshop with oceans of knowledge ms monita momita gorai assistant manager cpam mr n subramanian assistant manager cpam lohita sujit senior director copyright and digital economy motion picture association mumbai and mr v c matthews group of uh, head group of fox mandal and associates new delhi so i hand over the session to dr amudan to give a brief introduction about cpam yes sir thank you thank you madam sir um, uh, welcome all of you um, i am going to give you a small introduction about uh, cpam uh, cpam is a central government organization this is uh, self for ipr promotion and management a professional body under the aegis of department of promotion of industry and the inter internal trade which ensure focused action on issues related to ipr and addresses the seven identified objectives of the policy cpam assist in simplifying and streamlining of ip processes apart from undertaking steps for further ipr awareness commercialization <coughs> and enforcement the activities include uh, simplifying and streamlining of ip process by formulating and implementing a focused strategy for each policy objectives coordination with state level agencies and ministries department of government of india industry bodies as well as inter international agencies uh, and also it will uh, assist to set up ip cells um, and the third main objective is ipr awareness campaign across the country in schools colleges universities and the industry and fourth one is training and uh, sensitization program for enforcement agencies and uh, judiciaries according for uh, uh, coordination for effective enforcement of ip rights uh, also study and facilitate implementation of best practices for promotion and commercialization of ip within the country so with this objective um, cipom is uh, doing wonderful uh, job and uh, i am uh, very much thankful to sipam to agree uh, to associate with us to conduct the uh, one day workshop in ipr um, uh, activities so uh, um, i am just hand over the session to our pillar principal girisha sir to take a few words about the um, institution as well as the sipam thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much sir so good morning one and all <clears throat> well i take this opportunity to introduce our college hms engineering college uh, our college started in the year 1999 presently we run 11 ug programs five mtech programs that is pg programs and along with mba and mca so we have an intake of uh, 1500 students and in the campus we have around 4000 students so our mantra is once again anything for the benefit of students so we intend to knowledge the students in various disciplines so with respect to this uh, we have initiated a number of uh, ipr related activities in the college and also we have a number of center of excellences such as toyota kirloskar center of excellence cisco center of excellence 
then TechWed Center of Excellence, BMW Center of Excellence, all these things, ultimately, we try to transfer the knowledge to the students. We also conduct a number of certification programs and other activities. So this recently, from past two, three years, we are concentrating more on the IPR related activities. So presently, uh, around 56 patents have been filed from AMC Engineering College. We have already granted 20 patents. We all, that means we have 20 patents granted. Uh, this is a brief uh, introduction of our college. Uh, so I would like to welcome once again the resource persons of today's one day workshop. I hope the deliver deliverables will be good. And I once again welcome you all. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Amudan. Thank you, sir. Director, sir. I request our beloved director, sir, Dr. K. Mallikarjan Babu. He is the director of AMC Institutions. He has a vast experience of more than 35 years in the engineering education field. Engineering education field. Then he has worked as worked in various capacities like principal, vice chancellor, CEO. So I request our beloved director, Dr. K. Mallikarjun Babu, sir, to talk a few things regarding the college and today's workshop. Over to Dr. Mallikarjun. Thank you, Professor Girish. And uh, it's my indeed a great honor and pleasure to be here in this program, associated with this program. So on behalf of our beloved management and beloved chairman and all the uh, respected trustees of uh, Paramahansa Foundation Trust, and the AMC group of institutions. I sincerely extend hearty welcome to the expert members of SIPM, Cell for IPR Promotion and Management. So, and um, Mr. Subramanian, Mr. Maumita from SIPM, and also we have esteemed speakers, uh, Mr. Lohita and uh, Mr. Matthews, one is from Mumbai and one is from Delhi. So IPR is the thing today topic and we have some of the esteemed faculty and colleagues and also beloved students have joined this particular session. And I'm hoping that this will be more uh, value add to what already existing information, what we have and understanding about IPR and management. As you know, education has taken a lot of strides, higher education particularly, in the recent the past, a decade, decade and a half. And uh, since a decade, we were also embarking on what is called as entrepreneurship is the area. It's not an, in the intent, our intent as an educationist to say that it is not that we make students ready for a job, right? Job seekers, rather, they can also become a entrepreneurs and provide jobs to the Needing. The country requires a lot of jobs, a lot of uh, products and processes need to be established and coming in. And there are huge, lot of, lot of initiatives by the government of India. And also, no way our state government is lesser in these kind of motives and efforts to bring in entrepreneurship in a big way. And we all know uh, Bangalore is not only the IT hub but also it is a startup hub and there are a lot, many things vibrantly happening. In, the, in this realm, in this understanding, right? So we have to move and redefine the kind of uh, teaching practices, what we have already began to do in a different way and bringing in strong focus on the, what students capabilities that they demonstrate. That's what the idea, it is not that preparing them from earning some credits or writing an examination, passing the examination. Though I don't undermine that those things are also pretty important required. And though these things are pretty important, but we strongly believe that irrespective of the type of the institution, irrespective of the type of students, the demograph coming into the institution. So we need have one mantra that needs to be followed by all educationalists, right? all educators per se the faculty to motivate students to learn and move on to the application oriented 
learning. It is not that examination, remember, understand, and pass the examination. So we need to create something different. That's what at the AMC we started working upon. And they, as an end result, and our faculty are also involved in doing several deliverables towards this direction. So, but it takes, it takes a, it's a mission kind of thing. Maybe a short uh, term objective, which we keep about three years. We wish that more number of students would opt what is called as the entrepreneurship and the promoting. So all, all the, all the initiatives, that's what, what uh, we are looking into. With that brief, I, wholeheartedly welcome each and every one of you participants. I am also strongly believer of that. Today's session will throw more insights into what, in addition, what we have certain understanding and learning uh, towards IPR and its management. So with that, I heartily welcome each one of you and over to the organizers and over to Professor Amudan for the next uh, proceedings, please. Thank you. Uh, um, education field, engineering education field, then he has worked as worked in various capacities like principal, vice chancellor, CEO. So I request our beloved director, Dr. K. Mallikarjun Babu, sir, to talk a few things regarding the college and today's workshop. Over to Dr. Mallikarjun. Thank you, Professor Girish. And uh, it's my indeed. Uh, Great honor and pleasure to be here in this program, associated with this program. So on behalf of our beloved management and beloved chairman and all the uh, respected trustees of uh, Paramahansa Foundation Trust and the AMC Group of Institutions, I sincerely extend hearty welcome to the expert members of SIPM, Cell for IPR Promotion and Management. So, and um, Mr. Subramanian, Mr. Maumita from SIPAM, and also we have esteemed speakers, uh, Mr. Lohita and uh, Mr. Matthews, one is from Mumbai and one is from Delhi. So, IPR is the thing today topic, and we have some of the esteemed faculty and colleagues, and also beloved students have joined this particular session. And I am hoping that this will be more uh, value add to what already existing information, what we have and understanding about IPR and management. As you know, education has taken a lot of strides, higher education particularly, in the recent the past, a decade, decade and a half. And uh, since a decade, we were also embarking on what is called as entrepreneurship is the area. It's not in the intent, our intent as an educationist to say that it is not that we make students ready for a job, right? Job seekers, rather, they can also become entrepreneurs and provide jobs to the needy. The country requires a lot of jobs, a lot of uh, products and processes need to be established and coming in. And there are huge, lot of, lot of initiatives by the government of India and also no way our state government is lesser in these kind of motives and efforts to bring in entrepreneurship in a big way. And you all know uh, Bangalore is not only the IT hub, but also it is a startup hub. And there are a lot, many things vibrantly happening. In, the, in this realm, in this understanding, right? So we have to move and redefine the kind of uh, teaching practices, what we have already began to do in a different way and bringing in strong focus on the what students' capabilities that they demonstrate. That's what the idea. It is not that preparing them from earning some credits or writing an examination, passing the examination. Though I don't undermine that those things are also pretty important required, right? And though these things are pretty important, but we strongly believe that irrespective of the type of the institution, irrespective of the type of students, the demograph coming into the institution. So we need to have one mantra that needs to be followed by all educationalists, right? All educators, per se, the faculty, to motivate students to learn 
and move on to the application oriented learning it is not that examination remember understand and pass the examination so we need to create something different that's what at the amc we started working upon and the as a end result and our faculty are also involved in doing several deliverables towards this direction so but it takes it takes a, it's a mission kind of thing maybe a short uh, term objective which we keep about 3 years we wish that more number of students would opt what is called as the entrepreneurship and the promoting the so all all the all the initiatives that's what what uh, we are looking into with that brief i whole heartedly welcome each and every one of you participants i am also strongly believer of that today's session will throw more insights into what in addition what we have certain understanding and learning uh, towards ipr and its management so with that i heartily welcome each one of you and over to the organizers and over to professor amudan for the next uh, proceedings please thank you Sir, um, yeah, thank you for your welcome, sir. Uh, so, welcome you all for this uh, workshop on patent and copyright. Uh, so, now I will welcome the first speaker of today, sir, uh, Miss Momita Gorai, uh, assistant manager from CIPA. Uh, she did her mtech in biotechnology and she did her various courses in ipr like pg diploma in ipr and she has an experience as an innovation associate at national innovation foundation for four years and she has experience of working in sports authority india and taking care of fit india movement and she work in a novelty search uh, like a traditional knowledge and pattern search and she also worked as a coordinator for the inspire monarch awards So with the vast experience, now she is a assistant manager at CIPM and taking care of the awareness vertical and giving awareness to many colleges, universities. So today, the ma'am with us to give the knowledge on patents. So welcome you, ma'am. Okay. So uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, madam. Okay, so this PPT is visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it is. Okay. okay, so today we will discuss about uh, patents and introduction to patent. So before that, let's talk about IPR. What is IPR? Intellectual property right. Anything which comes from our intellectual. So it is an intangible property, not a tangible property. Tangible property means which you can touch, like a land, a uh, house. gold this are all tangible property but ipr intel is intangible property and it is divided into eight categories that is uh, the four categories which we commonly uh, understand now is a patent copyright trademark design and apart from this semiconductor uh, traditional knowledge plant varieties all uh, all these are there so if we talk about patent we can start from the ancient civilization uh invention was started from the time civilization started we are very much aware of indus valley civilization pottery developed during that time so pottery is an invention itself and it is late in 1600 in the medieval era during which the patenting process has started the government the kings queens they have started recognizing the innovation the invention and granting it a monopoly right this monopoly right is a patent for an invention which makes our life easier which makes our life comfortable and the invention so we can see here the earliest civilization egypt that mesopotamia iran iran from iran to the uh, gujarat eastern coast of gujarat that is the indus valley civilization uh, prosperous were prosperous here in china in russia so all these places of indus valley civilization the first innovation was a wheel it uh, was a pottery and after that wheel came and after that invention of wheel the life became easier and the civilization started the goods and services were transported from one place to another so this is the era so uh, we can start from here like we have for patents we have to know our rights 
and which the government, which the international organizations providing. So each and everyone has to be innovative and protect our inventions. So start from patent basics. Before that, we should know what is invention. So uh, there is not much difference between inventions with the inventions when it is further given a monopoly right, it become a patent. So generally speaking, invention is a new product, a process that solves a technical problem. And the uh, most famous invention, which I have taken here is a telescope. In earlier 1608, Hans Leperle, a Dutch eyeglasser, he combined convex and concave glasses and uh, adjust the orientation to look at the stars, the galaxy, moon and using this innovation galileo galilee uh, identified mountains on the surface of the moon so invention led to the discoveries uh, new arena new understanding in the science and technology some of the oldest invention are pots dating back 9000 bc that is a before christ in iran so this is a mirror which is made out of volcanic glass obsidian in turkey and mesoamerica this is also an oldest invention. This is a navigation device, Sinan, in China. It is about 2,000 years old. This is a steam engine in the uh, made by engineer Heron of Alexandria, which created countless machine, and he created countless machine. So these are the oldest inventions. So invention were from the before Christ, from long years ago. But it is late in the medieval era. It's got recognition. It's got monopoly. And it's got some form of protection. So this invention having some form of protections is given. It's known as patents. So some of the famous older invention all must be aware of Pascal, a well-known French philosopher. He saw his, his father was a tax calculator, was a tax collector, and he used to devote whole day in calculating how much tax has to be taken, what are the calculations. So uh, seeing this problem, he has invented a calculating machine, which made the tax calculation very easier. Within an hour, the tax can be calculated, how much to be taken. And uh, so this made the life easier. So this is the first time. And after this, the computer era came. So after that, the first calculating machine came. Then after that, the primitive form of computers were developed. Some other inventions, if we talk about, is a textile loom is a device of textile loom by margaret knight so witnessed a serious he was she was uh, just in 12 years of age when she witnessed a serious incident when the textile loom once they start working the machine was not stopping so this is in the modern era in the medieval uh, in europe so she uh, and this caused a serious accident so if there is there is some error we need to stop the machine she would see developed see uh, invented a device which would stop the machine thank you so this is the first uh, this was only the first time so she was granted 25 patents in her lifetime including one for a flat blomped paper bag and so this is a, a device so when you look at the problems we discuss some solution we come with some product or a process which will make our life easy so what can you do to become more innovative? So we have to think outside the box. We have to produce our original work. So another most valuable invention in the past is the telephone. We all are aware of this. Alexander Graham Bell is the inventor of the telephone. And do you know the most interesting fact about this? One more person, Eliza Gray, invented the same device. And Alexander Graham Bell just filed the patent some few hours before he, Eliza Gray, would be approaching for the patent filing. So what is the norm? The patent is filed. Uh, I would request everyone to mute the uh, 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 audio. Am I audible to everyone? Uh, yes, madam. You are audible. Okay. okay. So all the participants, please mute yourself so that uh, we don't have any extra noise. So Alexander Graham Bell. So he uh, after and after he applied for the patent, some few hours after that, Eliza Gray handed the patent for the telephone. So uh, can you see the power of patenting? Whole world knows that Alexander Graham Bell is the inventor of for the telephone. So telephone is also patented. 
and now you can see the extensive communication line the modern version of telephone how is that changed our life the, the modern version of communication so this all started in 1876 14 february 14 1876 he applied for a patent so after this thomas edition we all are aware of him uh, he has done thousands of experiments to come into a conclusion of that inventing an electric bulb, which we all know now many LED bulbs are there, some modern versions are there. So innovation is an improvement of the existing, of the old system, all old setup, and which has been invented to some modern form. So that is an innovation. So he... Uh, this incandescent light bulb was an experiment set up, was an experiment done by Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans, which uh, when they agreed to sell their patent to Thomas Edison. Okay. And Thomas Edison worked upon this and he developed electric bulb. He developed that light bulb, which you see today, the uh, Thomas Edison bulb. So he did thousands of experiments to come into a conclusion of electric bulb. So improving past invention. So we can see, we always know 1980s floppy disks. We all have read about it. Then floppy disks, after that CD-ROM came, DVD came, then memory stick came. That is the pen drives. And uh, that uh, memory card reader card came. Then now we are having 220 GB, 228 GB on our phone itself. So it's a development of the past st of storing data. So some of the patented invention which you see today, we all are aware of this ink. We all have seen this ink. This doesn't go up to six to seven days after uh, you cast your vote. So this is also a patented invention. This uh, sprayer and cedar device, this idli making device, we all have seen. Uh, please mute all the participants. Please mute yourself. This cloth clipping device, we use in our daily life. So everything which we use in our daily life is an innovation, is a patented, is a maybe if it is an industrial process, if it is produced, commercially used, if it is sold in the market is a patented thing. So we have to identify. So uh, I would make, I would ask all the students over here, uh, when I complete my PPT, I will check over this. So these are the few questions. Uh, all have to answer this. So invention that make our life easier. One I have taken is a car. See, next other invention, you would give an example. You would write, invention that increase our knowledge of the world. One is a microscope. The other invention you have to mention in the chat box. Invention that entertain us is a television. Invention that save our life is a fire extinguisher. Other examples you may write, for example, the oxygen concentrator, the life-saving devices used in ICU. So can you think here? So what are the inventions here? Can you see the television, this electric lamp? All these are inventions. So what uh, these all the questions I need all the students may answer in the chat box and I would look over that after I complete my PPT. So what other invention have led to discoveries? What invention has led to discoveries? One invention I have uh, told is our telescope. Telescope, with the invention of telescope, thousands of discoveries have come over here. So another invention, you would tell me what discoveries had led to invention. We all, we all know about the penicillin. After the discovery of penicillin, the first antibiotic, we have many invention after that. So you should answer this also. And what would your world be like without an invention? So you should think about this also and give some uh, comments in the chat box. I'd look after it after I complete my PPT. So now just let look in the Indian patent law. Before we discuss Indian patent law, if we discuss about, if we uh, think about the uh, European system or the what's going on outside in the uh, world. So we know about the Vienna Convention. It was late in some 1600. So at the Vienna Convention, uh, participants at the exhibitions were not uh, willing to exhibit their produce, not willing to exhibit their invention, innovation. So the king asked, what is the issue? They told their invention will be copied and will be imitated by somebody else. So what is the solution? So the king gave a monopoly. 
for some sort of right that somebody will not copy the machine, the device, the products without their consent. They will give the consent. You have to take a license from the producer to copy the same thing, to make the same thing, produce the same thing. So this type, this was the first time recognized in Vienna, in international arena. Now, if we talk about the Indian patent law, it was for the British trader. The British thought about themselves. So how they can defend their produce, how they can uh, produce their commercial activity, they can increase their commercial activities and earn more profits. In 1856, protection of invention based on British patent law of 1852 is the 1852 as a British patent law. So certain exclusive privileges were granted to innovator of new manufacturer for a period of 14 years. So British has given a recognition of monopoly for 14 years to their, to their trader, to their manufacturer, it's for their economic growth. So patent, so now let's understand this, that patent is the uh, right for the growth of the economy. Can you see USA is the most powerful country of the world? Why? Just because they are having the more lacks of patents in every sector, be it a service sector, be it healthcare, be it manufacturing, be it anything. Same, the China is also in the line. China is also uh, having lacks of patents in different sectors. So same with the Russia also. So these all are powerful nations just because of their economy, commercial activities, just because of their intellects, they are <coughs> powerful. So. <coughs> We have to understand that tangible property won't make us powerful. The intangible property, intellectual property, it will make us more powerful and give, give recognition to the world. So we have every year we see uh, Nobel prizes given. So once it is Nobel prizes given, everybody can experiment because that is something very noble and everybody need to learn from that. So now let's come to Indian patent law history. In 1859, the act modified as act 15 of patent monopoly is called exclusive privilege for making selling using invention in india and authorizing others to do for 14 years from the date of filing specification so this is also according to the british patent law 1852 and in the late 1872 to 1883 the patents and design protection acts so design, we all know, is an industrial, like forms, pattern of expression on a device, on an instrument that doesn't have a functional aspect, but it is an aesthetic value. But this design give a recognition. For example, if iPhone doesn't have that design, will you buy the iPhone? We recognize the iPhone because of the design. The Dell laptop having the design on the cover, on the body of the laptop, give a recognition. So this is the importance of design. The Pepsi bottle having the design. You can see the thumbs up bot bottle or some cosmetics. The perfume bottles. Have you seen the design of the perfume bottles? Those are, that are also the design innovations. So they get design rights. So in 1883, the Protection of Invention Act was again ratified. In 1888 to 1911, consolidation of invention and design acts. Both goes hand in hand at that time. So in 1911 to 1999, the Indian Patent and Design Act came into limelight. Indian Patent Act 1970, Design Act 2000 came into the, they were, they came into force and they were uh, uh, developed. 1999 to 2002, Indian Patent Act, they saw many amendments. They saw series of amendments for recognition of product, for process, for other things, other amendments. So one after one amendment was done according to the need of the current era. So patent grants an exclusive privilege to an inventor to exploit the market, exploit to exploit and market the fruit of their innovative, technical, scientific talent for a period of 20 years computed from the date of filing of the application. And during that term, prevent others from copying their invention in uh, advertently and inadvertently. So let's understand what is the meaning of this patent will grant an exclusive privilege for 20 years and you can in the process you can 
uh, produce, market, sell your item in the market, and you will have a monopoly right and any other person interested on your product on your process will have to take license from you for manufacturing that uh, product or the process and in in case and in uh, return will pay you royalty for that this is the meaning of the sentence so monopoly is granted as a consideration for disclosure by the patentee that means monopoly is guaranteed for 20 years as a means for disclosure by the patentee of their technical information which is contained in this specification now we'll uh, in the end slide i will show how the patent looks so the patent specification that contains the background the diagram detail of the innovation how it is done how it is what are the technical aspects so, and the documents attached to the application and material referred. Uh, I would request every participant to mute yourself uh, so that we can, uh, this session may proceed without any disturbance. So, the monopoly is granted. So, the meaning of this is monopoly is given for 20 years. In term, the patent discloses every aspect of the innovation in once you see visit the patent website there is a uh, there is a search column there is a search you can write patent search indian patent search in google you can write you can write indian patent search you can write indian patent search in Google and you go to M uh, in pass that is the advanced patent search of Indian patent office there you search some patent so you will find everything like from the application to publication uh, every data to the till the grant of the patent every forms which has been applied is uploaded over there and you can see the copy of every document so this is a transparent process everybody knows if somebody is applying for a patent what is the process what is the, the technical aspect how to reproduce it but in a but the thing is that in commercial level you cannot do that for your own experiment own learning you can learn from that you can modify the things you can uh Try the things with some, for example, A and B when uh, gives a reaction and a product C. You can do with A and B and the pro what you can see what is the product. So you can do this probability mismatch and this. So underlining process of patent system is the encouragement of improvement and innovation. That means the underlining purpose of the patent system. Uh, I would request somebody who is involved over there. Uh, please, if you are not interested, you may leave or uh, you may mute yourself. That Mr. Manoj, who is that I am seeing on the screen, please mute or exit the program. You cannot do this. I also sent a chat message to you. Please. I'm sorry, madam. Please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, the underlining purpose of the patent system is the encouragement of improvement. So, what is, what is the underlining purpose of the patent system? Why you are granting patent? We can see our pharmaceutical company, they are very specific about the patent. They doesn't disclose everything. Uh, they uh, Once they file the patent, all the documents are visible over there. And if you read some patent, uh, sometimes there is not clarity that what is the process and all. But if somebody wants a, a license, if I want my product, my to be sold in the market i have to disclose everything on the website so that it must be understandable to the person who wants a commercial advantage from my product my process so that that person come to take a license from me so it's on the person how much you want to disclose what you want to disclose and the thing the heart of the patent is the claims the claims get a legal protection that what you want to claim that is the thing you get protection. For example, you want to claim a product, you want to claim a machine, you want to 
claim a process, you want to claim something else. So everything will be that the claim. So that you can see on the patent website that the claims is the heart of the patent. It gets a legal protection. So the underlying purpose of the patent system is the encouragement of improvement and innovation. And in return for making known their improvement to the public, the inventor receives the benefit of a period of monopoly during which they become entitled to prevent others from performing their invention except by their license. So they cannot, they can prevent others. For example, if somebody is copying my process, I can sue that person for infringement proceeding that this is my process, it has been done. It has been copied, it has been imitated. So it's the meaning of this. So according to section two or zero of Indian Patent Act 1917, invention means a new product, process involving an inventive step and capable of industrial application. That means a process, a product will have an inventive step. It is not obvious to person skilled in that knowledge and is capable of industrial application. Means it can be produced, reproduced in industry for commercial gain. Otherwise, it won't get patented. So here's the difference between research paper and a patent gum. Discoveries are published in research paper, but you cannot publish a discovery in a patent. It has to have some commercial benefits, commercial aspects, industrial reproducibility to for it to gain a patent. So patentable subject matter. Uh, it can be product, apparatus, device, it can be a process, method, composition of matter, which will give a synergistic effect. For example, A and B are composed together. So some product C will form. So it will give a synergistic effect. Either new or improvement of the existing devices, existing apparatus, product and process. For example, LED bulbs, where you see now, is a improvement of the current, uh, in, uh, improvement of the past. Uh, electric bulb. So patentability criteria. So what are the criteria for patentability? First thing before we go for a patent, we do a prior art search. And what is this prior art search? What is already existing? Suppose I want to develop a device uh, which will have a, which will have, so I want to develop a pacemaker, uh, advanced type of pacemaker. So I will look in the market, what are the already available pacemakers are there? What are the functional aspects? In uh, how much time there is biofilm development? In how much time that pacemaker can be kept in that uh, in the heart of the patient? Or in, if it is reusable or it is a lifetime thing, or I will uh, now the pacemaker is coming of a biocompatible material. Means the pacemaker one kept in the heart, once kept their biocompatibility, it will just act like your own organ it will not cause any immune reaction or it will not cause biofilm development biofilm means anything external material if you keep inside the body some external the bacteria will take advantage over that the surface and will uh, form a coating layer on the surface for example if the uh, this same phenomena is seen in the tooth infection also. Biofilm develop over the tooth when bacteria find an advantage over the existing system or the existing immunity. So it is immunocompromised or not. So I will see like this the prior art. So how search the prior art? There are uh, uh, n number of sources. You can go to Google Scholar, Google Patent, Chinese uh, Patent Office, European Patent Office, uh, Indian Patent Office, that is Advanced Patent Search. It's some international databases are also there, like Patent Scope and everything. You can search from there. So if some databases are paid, some are freely available. For TK, the CSIR has developed uh, TKDL, traditional knowledge, digital library. This was developed because in USA, they were patenting formulation of anti-inflammatory activity from neem and from neem. So neem is a very traditionally Ayurvedic known component of Indian Ayurvedic system. How can it be patented? So uh, they were patenting the haldi also for anti-inflammatory activity. Curcumin is the component which you get from haldi. So they were 
pending that this is cannot be done so there are databases for searching so that thing depend patent is our territorial right whether you want protection in your territory or you want a global protection or you, or the countries in which you want a protection suppose i want to do a business in china for my product so i will not take a patent in india i will uh, focus on china so that is the thing so there is a system of filing the patent so subramaniam sir will explain the detail of filing pct paris convention and uh, indian patent filing so whole filing process he will explain in detail uh, after 11th uh, after 11:30 so prior art what is the prior art prior art disclosing knowledge must be of a date prior to the date of filing of com complete specification filed in pursuance of an application for a patent made in india so anything so what the meaning of this is prior art with the prior already available it should be before hand of the filing of my patent it cannot be after but my filing date so the reference can be given to the beforehand for example for making some formulation anti cancer drugs uh, i will refer to the prior art which is before my filing date i cannot refer something which is after my filing date so it's our published knowledge or some research paper some uh, right wrote, uh, written invention written uh, note so discover to discover precisely what constitute an inventive step one must examine the state of the art at relevant time when the application for patent was made so we have to this meaning is meaning is this one have to examine the state of the art state of the art means the prior knowledge the prior publication which is available at the relevant time when the application for patent was made so the prior art may be contained in the prior claims so we have to see the prior published patent the prior claims in the patent office or it may be contained in a public domain in india or elsewhere or publication in any other manner including public use for example some seminar conference paper that is a public use so prior art according to the indian patent act 1970 indicates by various provision the following as prior art. specification for a patent that is a detailed description of a patent any other document published knowledge it may be oral or by means of use or by any other manner so patentability criteria the first criteria is novelty it must be new not in public domain in any form before filing of patent of application so that is the thing novelty when we say our extraction is no novel for example some active uh, pharmaceutical ingredient for some forms of cancer how, how can you say that novel it is not reported in the market it is not available in any published form of knowledge or in any oral form of knowledge in some recordings it is not known to anyone you are the first person to extract that component so you will be an innovator for that so it must be new not in public domain in a form before filing of patent application so inventive step it must not be obvious to a person skilled in the art it must not be known to the person already doing that research for example if the cancer comp anti cancer drug must not be known to the experts to the researcher to the scientist who are doing anti cancer research this is the meaning of this in industrial applicability must be capable of industrial application it must be capable of reproducing in the industry the same process can be uh, uh, when you reproduce in industry producing something in lab scale and industrial scale is thousand time difference in lab scale you do in a very small uh, component when you take the same process in industry you have to do Thousands of a uh, repetition, so you have to produce it in a pilot scale. Then you have to produce in a large scale, medium scale. Then large scale, you have to take a uh, big tanks, fermenters of different size, the different component, the different ingredients, the uh, of different composition. So these all things. So it must be reproduced in industry because if that component can only be made in lab, how can you uh, sell that for commercial gain? So, for example, novelty. 
So this I have a new process for synthesizing a compound. Inventive step, technical advance as compared to the existing knowledge, which are not known to the experts working in that domain, capable of being made and used in industry. It can be produced in industry large scale. So if you see novelty, the th same thing I have been explaining uh, from last 30 minutes. The concept of novelty lays down on only what is new at the time of filing of the patent application. According to Section 21 of Indian Patent Amendment Act 2005, a new invention means any invention technology which, are, which has not been anticipated, means published. Anticipated means which has not been published by any publication in any document or used in the country elsewhere or in the world before the date of filing of the application with the complete specification. So if we look at inventive step that I so told, so anything which will have a technical advance as compared to existing knowledge and having economic significance or both, or that make an invention not obvious to the person skilled in the art, to the researcher experts. So inventive step should be such as, as could not have been obvious to the person skilled in the art working in that domain of knowledge. So non-obviousness, certain factors can be considered to find out whether the invention is obvious or not. This scope and content of prior art. Uh, what is the scope and the content of prior art? The difference between the prior art and claims at the issue. The already existing prior art and your claims should be different, should be up to 90% uh, difference has to be there for you to be noble, for you to be non-obvious and level of ordinary skill in the pertinent art, objective evidence of non-obviousness, commercial success, long felt unsolved need and failures of others. So here is the example of an earlier patent. As you can see, Walter Hunt received a patent for a dress pin. We all know about that safety pin. So this is the patent for that grant invention on April 10, 9, 1849. Mercer's patent entitled Open Spring Safety Pin was patented on April 19, 1994. This is the Open Spring Safety Pin. So it has been patented in 1994. So capable of industrial application. This also explained you explained many times. So I can escape this or it is a relation to an uh, invention means that the invention is capable of being made used in industry. Invention must produce a practical result. The basic purpose for granting a patent monopoly is the benefit derived by the public from an invention with substantial utility. It means that public will get some benefit out of the invention with substantial utility. You can, for example, any device you are buying from the market makes your life easier. You are having a utility, for example, the gas chulas which you buy from the market may help you in cooking food. For example, uh, the fan which you buy from the market, the AC which we buy, buy from the market, everything is patented. The fridge you buy from the market, the cooler you buy from the market. So this is the thing, the substantial utility. It, the utility means the purpose, the use, requirement means an asserted use must so that the claims, claimed invention has a significant and presently available benefit to the public. So find out the invention over here, Michael Jackson's anti-gravity dance. Can you see this? He was very famous for his dance. He was a very well-known personality and a respected person as well. So his dance was well-known, renowned in the world and still people are trying to imitate that, learn from that. So how is he was doing? So what was the secret behind this? When you see this special type of shoe with hitched member, the base and the secret behind his illusion, the 45 degree Michael Jackson's anti-gravity dance. So shoe invention, new useful improvement made in the existing system. Uh, another interesting fact we all have heard about, we all have seen, we are uh, using this. Gillette uh, Macho 3 is protected by a strong portfolio of 35 patents, the including patent on the manufacturing process 
which deter competitor from entering the triple blade razor market. That's why this, these razors are so costly because no competitors can en enter the market. The manufacturing process itself is a patented. So how can somebody uh, imitate the process? It's difficult. And so protected by 35 patents, the same goes for pharma. A single product will have some 38 or 40, 50 patents, non-patentable invention. So now, now let's look what are the things which are non-patentable. So we have to understand clearly that what can be patented, what cannot be patented. So section three of Indian Patent Act 1970 provides for an explicit list of inventions which are not patentable. So inventions which is frivolous or which is anything we, or claims anything obviously contrary to well-established natural laws. The, this means that anything which is frivolous or which is against well-established natural laws. For example, anything uh, Tell you against the gravity, it cannot be done. Or a Newton's law of motion against inertia, against friction, you cannot. Because it's a well-established natural laws. So the patent application for gravity wheel perpetual motion machine means it will without any inertia, without any loss of energy, it will work uh, 24 into 7. The patent was saying that an invention claimed to produce a powder delivery wheel which is perpetual motion machine working by gravitational force. And this machine was claimed to be never stopped except by human means. How is it possible? The machine will have some wear and tear. The machine will have some loss of energy and of inertia, frictions, all these things will be there. But no, uh, it, was a, it was claimed to be a 100% efficient machine. No machine can be 100% efficient. So it's a well-established natural law. The claimed machine was a stationary engine of unlimited size, which was capable of continuous power, power output from gravity force and the gravity force can be universally available in any planet. So uh, he's told about the gravity, but the things which are opposing the gravity is not told. So, uh, or which caused efficiency loss was not given mention. The patent was abandoned on, on the ground of section 3A as its performance was contrary to the law of, thermo, or law of thermodynamics. So another clause, an invention, the primary or intended Gadi use of commercial- Gadi Ali. Gadi Ali in there. Somebody who is talking, uh, please mute yourself uh, because after I finish my uh, session, you can talk. So inventions, an invention, the primary or intended use or commercial exploitation of which could be uh, contrary to public order or morality or which cause serious prejudice to human, animal, plant life or health or to the environment. This means anything, any device which will cause a serious prejudice to the plant animal life. For example, galiton, it uh, was invented in French, was a, a device for a painless death, or just death in a second. So that cannot be patented, right? Anything weapon of mass destruction cannot be patented. So Sarco machine, that is a 3D capsule designed for assisted suicide. It cannot be patented. It's ending somebody's life. However, based on the ground of morality, the patent applications are not granted. The mere discovery of a scientific principle or the formulation of an abstract theory or discovery of any living things, non-living substance occurring in nature. For example, you discover already existing bacteria in nature. Will it be patented? No, for example, discovery of microorganism, but GMOs, genetically modified organisms are patented you, because you are modifying that uh, system in the lab. It is a laboratory created system. For example, GMOs are used to uh, produce uh, vaccines or your uh, another enzymes or another pharmaceutical drug. Uh, the famous thing is that uh, insulin enzyme insulin uh, hormone is produced in large scale by using the gmos system so it is a, a, a very human friendly uh, 
and uh, not immune uh, not uh, and against the immune system because it doesn't have the only system in the bacteria was that you incorporate your gene using a vector a plasmid and the bacteria will think it as its own genome and will start producing uh, with that uh, data for example the plasmid is having the gene for insulin production the, that will goes on producing the insulin you give the substrate it will go on producing the insulin that's it so this is a scientific theory it does not matter how insightful is the theory however any practical implication or application depicting such theory which uses the abstract theory may be patentable the property of certain material to withstand mechanical shock so the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of known efficacy of that substance or the mere discovery of any new property or new use for a known substance or of a mere use of a known process machine apparatus unless such known process result in a new product or employ at least one new reactant for example if a fan and light uh, are incorporated together and you make tell a system for producing getting light and air together so this cannot be fan and light work separately this cannot be protected for example the patent application for beta crystalline form of a imitinib mesylate salt by novartis so it is a beta crystalline form it cannot be protected of the same drug how can you protect that so the existing the uh, two existing form of a similar component for example uh, water and ice these are existing form of the same component so it is modified version of an existing this beta crystalline form it is a modified version of an existing drug and hence on the ground of section 3d the patent cannot be granted the patent office uh, proposes the patent office uh, poses the concept of ever greening which is a practice of inventor of patented product for extending their monopoly period by various strategies this the same thing has been done by pharma company once they see their patent is about to expire they do some modification on the same existing process and they file for another patent so that the same product can be uh, sold in the market ever and ever and they will have a monopoly of this sometime you are getting in the market like this uh, medicine the commercial name has changed now this is available in the market instead of that drug so this is the evergreening process done by indian pharma company so new use of aspirin for heart ailment earlier aspirin was known for headache but now the aspirin is used for heart ailment mere new use of knee it cannot be patented a substance obtained by mere admixture resulting only in the aggregation of the properties of the component thereof or a process for producing such substance this means a process the uh, mixture of salt uh, salt sugar water and color this gives only the salt will give a salty taste sugar will give us sugary taste and the color will give a color so this is an aggregation of thing uh, it cannot be patented there is not a synergistic thing no? this will not produce something else the, this salt and sugar they do not react with each other to produce something else so this cannot be protected so patent application entitled sterile pharmaceutical compositions the patent applicant claim one includes a sterile pharmaceutical composition including a water insoluble anti-cancer agent and a pharmaceutically accepted carrier albumin the ratio of w is to w means by weight by weight of a carrier and a far carrier and an anti-cancer agent for example a carrier uh, carrying delivers the compound to the uh, body to the uh, reactive system so this doesn't react with the agent anti-cancer agent so of the albumin of anti-cancer agent so it doesn't react so this system will not be protected right because albumin will uh, do its work of a carrier and the anti-cancer agent will have will uh, use this carrier only for uh, going into the system 
solution of sugar color additives in water to form soft rings a mixture resulting so this cannot be protected because this uh, color sugar this work separately so they are not giving a synergistic system but a mixture resulting into a synergistic properties of mixture of ingredient may be patentable for example soap detergent lubricant when this gives a synergistic effect they are patentable so mere arrangement or rearrangement or duplication of devices each functioning each functioning independently of one another in a known way a fan like it a fan integrated with light claiming an invention for providing air flow and light this cannot be protected an apparatus for giving rise to a metallic billows for example a hydraulic machine or something else which are combined together and you say we are getting an aggregation of properties not a synergistic a method of agriculture horticulture this cannot be protected given patent protection for example improved soil generation method you know earthworms are used for improving the soil quality method of algae cultivation weed removal methods <coughs> this cannot be protected so agriculture equipments are patentable any process for medicinal surgical curative prophylactic therapeutic other treatment of human beings or any other process for a similar treatment of animal to render them free of disease or to increase their economic value and that of their products for example the medicinal method administering medicinal process medicines uh, intravenous or orally subcutaneous it cannot be patented so surgical method cataract operation curative method cleaning plug process prophylactic method means vaccination anything which uh, works for your immunity diagnostic method x ray blood diagnostic process these are not patentable any method of treatment of animal to render them free of disease or to increase their economic value or that of their products for example a sheep treatment method for increasing own yield cosmetic uh, cosmetic surgery and uh, other methods silicon implants is cannot be patented so treatment performed on tissues or fluids permanently removing from the body surgical therapeutic diagnostic apparatus are patentable because this apparatus come under machine for example the apparatus uh, any kind of apparatus let's say used in icu for uh, the ventilator Uh, which are sold by the companies the, the uh, uh, pharma companies or any other companies which are uh, selling the ventilators so these ventilators are patented the, but the process of providing that ventilation to that person done by a skilled person in the icu this process cannot be patented so surgical theoretic diagnostic apparatus or instruments are patentable so plants animal in whole or any other part thereof other than microorganisms but including seed varieties species or essentially biological process for production propagation of plant and animal so this cannot be patented plant as a whole cannot be patented animal as a whole cannot be patented seeds cannot be patented but you can uh, see nowadays the seed company monsanto they are applying that is uh, farmers rights and many other conflicts nowadays is there so plant animal varieties species no uh, biological process for producing or propagation of plant and animal however microorganisms other than the one discovered from nature may be patented that is genetically modified organisms Math mathematical business method or a computer program per se or algorithm cannot be patented Math mathematical methods include mental skill as they are not patented mathematical methods are used for writing algorithm computer programs for different applications are also not patented although the applicant may argue that the said invention is of technical advancement and not the math mathematical model however new calculating machines combination of hardware software is patented anything which is comes device a modification of existing device is a patented so literary dramatic musical artistic work or any other aesthetic creation 
whatsoever including cinematographic work television production is not patented this comes under copyright so these subjects matter fall under the copyright and related right protection a mere scheme or rule or method of performing mental act or method of playing games a method for solving a crossword puzzle a method for of learning a language so noble apparatus for playing game or carrying out a scheme is patentable a presentation of information any manners for or method of expressing information whether by spoken words visual display symbol diagram any math any manners or method of expression uh information maybe by spoken words visual display symbols diagrams these are not patented so topography of integrated circuit is not patented because the semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act 2000 is there for patenting that the three dimensional configuration of electronic circuit used in microchip semiconductor chips and is not patentable because the protection of layout designs of integrated circuit is governed separately under semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act 2000 an invention which which in effect is traditional knowledge or which is an aggregation or duplication of known properties of traditionally known components are not patentable for example patents uh, application entitled device used for manually hauling agricultural produce or uh, use of turmeric neem tul etc is not patentable as it is traditionally known this are a traditional knowledge although if someone develops a medicine from traditional plants or an uh, extract for example ointment having active ingredient that is an effective for uh, from leaf of the plant is patentable for example we all must have known about the malaria anti malarial drug sina quinine this is also a uh, quinine is an active component uh, which are extracted from some cinnamon species of plant so it is patentable because it is an active component which has been extracted following several processes and it has been produced in large scale now it can be produced commercially so it is patentable section 4 invention relating to atomic energy no patent shall be granted in respects of an invention relating to atomic energy falling in sub sections of section 20 of atomic energy act 1962 the atomic energy section is a very sensitive thing and it is taken care of by the government so now this is how the patent specification looks like this is form 2 for complete specification so uh, can you see this method for detecting antibiotic residue in sample so it is visible to everyone this is it's look like this similar to the research paper the difference is there in the claims you don't have any claims in research paper and the discoveries you don't published in patent the you go for innovation in patent so this is the technical field the invention the present invention relates to optical fiber sensor for detection of antibiotic residue in a sample and more particularly to a method for detection quantification of antibiotic and residues thereof based on optical transduction of enzyme hydrolysis on electro um, on electroactive polymers so can you see the background over here the background so it tells about each of the processes and uh, each of the steps taken to reach up to there then the objective the principal objective of the embodiment disclosed herein is to provide an optical fiber sensor for detection of antibiotic residue thereof in a sample so brief description of figures uh, is there and uh, everything so next thing we can see detailed description conclusion and claims this is the heart of com complete specification it will have a claims uh, the claim are of two type dependent claim and independent claim so dependent means one is the core claim and the rest all other is a dependent claim
can you see for example a sensor for detecting antibiotics or residue thereof in a sim in a sample set sensor comprising now this sensor it will talk about the sensor at least one optical fiber wave guide having a at least one probe region comprising at least substantially curved or tapered point so at least one uh, nanostructure conductive polymer immobilized uh, say over the fiber so at least one beta lactamase enzyme variant fragrant and this is the independent one now the next other claim is dependent the sensor as claimed in claim one the sensor as claimed in claim two the sensor mm -hmm. as claimed in claim two so you can see the sensor has claimed in claim one. Now it will talk about the sensor further comprising at least one linker capable of immobilizing said enzyme in the nanostructure. So the enzyme will give a detection of the antibiotic residue by reacting over that. And this uh, sensor uh, is a description. The sensor, the thing is claimed is a sensor. The sensor has a protection, the protection and the sensor uh, the uh, main description of the sensor that how is it done, where is it done, what are the enzymes. So can you see the sensor as claimed in claim two. So now it will talk about the immobilizing enzyme in claim in three. That is uh, the sensor is claimed in claim two. So this is our all our dependent claim. The sensor has claimed in claim two, sensor has claimed in claim one. So these are all dependent over the first claim. So now uh, I would, it's time for India to take up the rightful place in the global arena of creativity and innovation. So now let's all just be a creator, innovator. So uh, the thing I was discussing, I would come to this slide. So I want everyone to answer this. What other invention that had led to discoveries? So uh, honestly, people take some five, 10 minutes and give an answer to this question. For answering this, you write uh, question number one. Answer is this. What other invention that have led to discoveries? What other discoveries that have led to invention? So I want everybody should be clear about what is discovery, what is invention. And how many uh, invention can you identify uh, in this scene, in this picture? So these three questions I will read in the chat box. And for the time being, I want that anybody has any doubt or any question may please ask uh, and now after 11:15 uh, we will end the session so uh, all the students over here may attempt the question so i will take uh, i will give some 5 minutes to answer this if anybody uh, please answer in the chat box
so it seems uh, not many people has uh, replied over here so uh, am i audible to everyone yes ma'am yes, ma oh, okay so uh, since uh, people are not replying so uh, how will i understand that what is the takeaway from the session because the students over here must uh, reply uh, to this that what inventions has led to discoveries because invention means a machine a device a process because of that many discoveries has occurred we have uh, seen electron microscope because of electron microscope we can see all the organelle of the cell for example a cell uh, a plant cell a animal cell and the organelle for example mitochondria the nucleus the dna everything are strands simple single uh, single strands of a uh, uh, fiber can be seen in electron microscope so this is the invention which has led to the discovery but uh, uh, since i didn't get any answer i am not aware uh, that how much people has understand okay some replies are there uh, it's uh, good to see tv light okay somebody has replied for this uh, what are the uh, innovation visible in the scene okay so another uh, question is here what other discoveries that has led to the innovation so penicillin you know antibiotics it was discovered accidentally but you know because of this uh, bacterial infections fungal infections or any other microorganism infections a uh, lakhs of people die around the world so it was a great discovery of penicillin after the penicillin discovery study started on antibiotics and a huge research team scientists engineers they started studying antibiotics how does it work what are the because antibiotics is any substance produced by the bacteria by an organism which inhibit the growth of another organism it is the support system for a bacteria's own support from from own growth to uh, in make another organism incompetent in the system so this is this antibiotics has been used which makes life easier in the modern because earlier in war the thousands of people lakhs of people used to die because their wound won't be healing if there is some microorganism that wound will not heal at any cost there will be gangrenes and etc so it will not heal so these are the discovery of this antibiotic discovery which led to the inventions in the medicine in the medical era of the current medicine system which is see so i didn't get much reply from there uh, it seems that uh, okay people are less active so another thing another uh, uh, here i wanted an invention this is a very common thing invention that make our life easier you can write the thousands of invention there you can see in, around your room and you will find an invention you can see on the fan light television computer all these are inventions so invention that increase our knowledge in the world this also you can see you can go to your science lab your chemistry lab physics lab and you can uh, see all this thing invention that entertainers that is the mobile is the biggest invention apart from television life saving devices you can write invention that saves our life so uh, the thousands of example over here okay so my session uh, i would uh, conclude and i would anybody having any doubt may ask me or uh, i will hand over the session to uh, subramaniam sir after some time so any doubt please ask uh, me hello madam uh, am i audible yes sir yes, sir yeah uh, say for example normally there is a product like a bicycle or a sanitary system or some other thing and uh, we just uh, improvise on that can we get patent for that Uh, sir one once more time you please ask your question there was some noise on the background yeah already there is a product correct uh, like uh, indian type of water closet or european water closet or asiatic fan like this is a sanitary closet correct so we improvise on that closet by adding certain features 
So can we get patent because already it is a well established one. Uh, is it a machine? It is an uh, it is a utility, sanitary utility. Okay, sanitary utility. If you improvised on the current system, for example, if already uh, the product is available in the market, you yes. have to improvise yeah. on the functional aspect of the product. Once you improvise on the functional aspect of the product, you, yes. you will yes. go for a patent application and you can apply for a patent. Uh, because utility model is something with uh, below patent. It gets, gets let, uh, less protection. For example, five, 10 years protection is given for a utility uh, model. But uh, when we go for a patent, we get some 20 years of protection. And another type of thing, if you are increasing the aesthetic view or if on the uh, beautification or on the looks, then you can go for design innovation, uh, design uh, application. <laughs> But uh, the thing is, uh, it will design is for 10 years and the patent is for 20 years. So design doesn't carry any functional aspect, but you work on the functional aspect, it will be a, a patent thing. Yeah, that's a nice thing. And uh, you said about some composites. So we develop uh, certain composites. Already there could be, say, for example, a geopolymer composite, correct? So um, if we improvise on that the geopolymer composite, we can still get a patent? Yes, yes. If you there is a geopolymer already available in the market, so you need to study on the component, what is the composition and, for example, some composition of A, B, C, uh, giving us yes. synergistic effect. You just remove your composition should be A, E and G or yes. A, E, H. That's it. You have to remove the composition as it is available in the market. You can miss and match and improve on the current working system. You can improve your uh, functional output has to be something different from already available in the market. That's the thing. And it will have some synergistic thing. Your composition will give some synergistic effect already available in the market. Then you can go for a patent. And this patent uh, requires some maintenance cost. For example, if you are once you are guaranteed a patent, granted a patent, that patent requires a maintenance cost of some 800 rupees per year. Uh, so that patent licensed or some startup or a company must be ready to take that. They must be interested. You have to find already, you have to register or create a company or already a startup who is working on this composition or ready to take your product uh, to for commercialization of the product so that you can get a return for your patent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Any more questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any more questions, please ask. Okay, uh, I'm stopping the sharing. Uh, now, uh, Subramaniam sir will uh, take the session after some time. He will give a detail on the patenting system, Indian and international patent, how to acquire a patent, what are the steps of patenting, and uh, he will give a detailed explanation of uh, everything. So if nobody has a question right now, uh, will uh, my session is uh, over and then wait for the next session uh, take some break uh, and uh, you will subravaniam sir will uh, continue after some time okay thank you thank you participants for uh, being with us in the first session so we can take a break for 10 minutes and we can come back at 11:30 so that we will start our session at 11 So welcome back you all uh, for the second session that is uh, we are going to see the patent filing process. So I am Subramanian from uh, SIPA having experience of uh, more than five years in this IP field by creating the IPSL and university IP policy and now I am taking care of the awareness practice. So let's move on the process.
So in the previous session, we will learn about uh, what is meant by patent and what are the subject matters you can protect under patents and what are the subject matters you could not get patents in India according to the section three of the Patents Act. Um, so now we are going to see what are the procedure as an inventor I need to follow to file the patent for my invention. So if we need to patent the invention, you need to follow these steps. First one. You want to conduct a prior art search. So what is meant by prior art? So prior art in the sense, what are all the documents or what are all the informations already available in the public domain before filing the patent application? That is termed as the prior arts. And the prior art may be anything. It may be a journals, it may be a newspaper articles, it may be a videos, or it may be a wordings in some blogs, websites, it may be anything. So what are the already prior informations available in the public domain before filing of your patent application is termed as the prior art. So first, before filing the patent application for our invention, we need to conduct a prior art search in the databases and want to know whether our invention can be patent or not through the prior art search. After doing the prior art search, uh, once we come to the conclusion that our invention is not already available, so it is new, then we want to draft the patent application. And for drafting, there are some pages we are going to learn that thing. After drafting a patent application, you want to file the patent application in the patent office with the relevant forms. There are more than 30 forms in the patent office. So you need to give some relevant forms when you are filing the patent application. So these are the three major steps uh, as an inventor you need to follow to file the patent application in India. So what are the search tools? So as a prior arts is considered, prior art consists of both patent literatures and also the non-patent literatures. So non-patent literatures in the sense, it may be a journals or any videos or any patent literature means patent documents. So as per the non-patent literatures, we already know that there are many databases like Google Scholar, NCBA and open access journals of that. South Ganga is there. There are different databases where we can do the non-patent like journal publication search. And for other likes videos and all, we can use Google Yahoo. So you can do your search. So these are the non-pattern literature databases that we already know to take the documents from those databases. So here I am giving more emphasis on the patents tools. Uh, so where we can search the pattern documents. Uh, as per your consideration, we already know that a Google Scholar is there. Likewise, for patents, there is a specific uh, database called Google Patents. There we can do a search and find out that our in invention is already existed or not. And next one is eSpassnet. Uh, this is a European Union database where you can do the search uh, by giving the keywords of your invention and it will retrieve the documents to you. <laughs> And third database is INPOS. This is an Indian patent database where you can search the patent documents which is filed in India. And fourth one is the patent scope uh, where you can see that what are the documents is filed in uh, through PCT route at World Intellectual Property Organization. So these are the different databases where you can search the patent documents and these databases are free. Uh, we can access it free and download the documents as a free. Uh, there is no need to pay anything to download the documents. But instead of these databases, there are several paid databases of that. But as an initial research, as a student and as academicians, uh, we, as an initial stage, we can search these databases and we can retrieve a lot of information from these databases. So I will show you how to do the search in these databases. Uh, first, we start with uh, InPOS. I am giving more emphasis on InPOS and ESPASNet. 
So when we take in parts, so you can use the Boolean syntax like and, or, or not. So you know what is in the and, two keywords will be given. Or means either this or that. So you can use the Boolean syntax. And also you can use that truncations like star. Star is the sense it's like a, a root word. You can use some root word uh, like um, electrification. So take a term called electrification. So instead of using electrification as a whole, you can use electric star so that the documents which will retrieve the keywords having the electric as a root word. And you can use a dash for the single character. Like you can miss one character. Like some countries are using C O L O U R. Some countries are using C O L O R. At that time, you can use question mark or dash to fill those characters. So these are the some syntax you can use in the Inpass database. And next database is is passnet. Uh, there also you can use the Boolean syntax and or or not and truncations like a star, question mark, and you can use the hashtag. And there's a proximity. Proximity means nearby words. Uh, you can use electric uh, prox distance less than two vehicles so that it will retrieve the documents which is having the electric and vehicle within the two word limit. So likewise, the databases will give you the documents. So let's explore. I will take a simple example to you. So I take an example called a plantable pencil uh, so that we will do a search in the databases that how we can do a search for this uh, pencil. So I will share the doc. Uh, Okay, so I take a simple example that is a plantable pencil. So plantable pencil in the sense I am having a pencil with me. In the end of the pencil, I am having a capsule. So the capsule is having the seed. So when I put that seed in the soil, uh, it will come as a plant. So this is an invention I have. I take as an example. So here I am going to do the search whether my invention is patentable or not. So you want to visit the IP India website, ipindia.gov.in. There in the right hand side, you are having the option public search. You just click the public search. And in the public search, patents. So now we are opening the document. So this is a in-pass database. Here you can see uh, title, abstract, complete specific. These are the terms that are used in the pattern documents. So we can use, uh, in, you can search in the title or you can search in the abstract or you can search in the complete specification. I just search in the abstract. Uh, so my invention is, uh, pencil which is having some seed in it so that i called as the plantable pencil so i can use plant pencil and seed so i can use stock because it will give seed, seed means or anything So like this, you want to give the keyword. Yeah. So here, once I uh, do a search, here I will get the three documents. So here you can see, First one is a rustic wooden pencil with seed. So there is a pencil which is having the seed. 
and second council next one is design and development of an eco friendly paper pencil which can be grown into a tree or plant so i i just choose one document so here you can see this is the title and these are the numbers when it is published when it is filed and what is the field of invention and who is filing this patent so name and applicant so this is the abstract of the invention complete specification once you click the view application status So you can see view documents. Here you can get all the documents which are all filed by the inventor. So here I just choose drawings. So here you can see the drawings. So this is the pencil and the final they have some seeds. So by using that they will plant and it will become as a plant. So this is a plantable pencil. So by this search I come to know uh, what are the invention I had uh, is already existing. So I want to make some improvements in it to file the patent application. So by, by the image we will learn that. Uh, it is not patentable so this is a uh, in pass so you can download the documents there is no need to pay anything you just need to put a keyword there and you want to do your search so that's the thing so this is an indian patent database now we are moving to the next one that is is fastnet so I will just show you something only you can explore more in this database there is a help page so it will say how to do the search and all. I will just uh, give you the introduction about how to do the search in the databases. So next database is uh, European Union database. So when you are at the final year of uh, projects or when you are doing some research. Yeah. Uh, kindly make use of these two databases which will give you more information uh, regarding your research or projects okay. so in east past so i just give you a same term so you can use n number of keywords here as per the invention what you have see when we are putting the keyword in this database we are getting uh, 10324 results so it is very difficult to search all these 10234 results so we can here we can use the another strategy called classification so what is what classification means patent office they are following a classification system so they are classifying your technology based on some code so based on that instead of using the keywords we can also use the classification to do a search so how to do the classification search you can click the classification search here in the classification search you want to give you a keyword like uh, in patterns uh, we want to learn that all are you all are not using the same keywords like uh, pencil pen or nothing so they will give us a broad term so there are alternative keywords like how we search in the journals we are using the alternative keywords likewise in patent also there are different type of alternative keywords we want to learn so that uh, here instead of giving pencil uh, pen or something we can use here 
common term called writing instrument so when we put the keyword writing instrument it will give many classifications so we have to read the description here and which is very relevant to it then we want to choose that thing. so i just choose uh, this one pens with writing points somewhat relevant i just choose this thing and see so once we use the classification and the keyword now our results will reduce due to 29 so now it is very easy for us to read these 29 documents so i just choose the one document clear So this is the number, CA means it's a Canada, and this is the title of the invention. These are the invent applicants and inventor. These are the classifications used by the patent office. And this is the abstract. These are bibliographic data. If you need to download the whole document, so this is a description, claims, drawings, original document. You just click original document. So this is the original document. So you can download it by clicking here. Download original document. So that's it. So now we are having the whole document. Likewise in Indian uh, patent office also, you can download the whole document. So it is very easy to search the information in these databases. First, you need to come up with alternative keywords and make frame your invention how to do the search once you know that you want to put those keywords in this database and it will retrieve the documents and you can download the documents which is somewhat relevant to very much so there is no need to pay anything to download documents to read the documents and to access these databases so kindly make use of these databases to do your uh, projects and research and all the things so uh, now I will conclude this uh, search by, so I take one invention, so I am coming up with one invention. Uh, when I am doing the search in this database, uh, I, I think that my invention is already existing in this database. So I want to improve my invention. So don't panic. So if your invention is already existed, kindly take those information as your background and work on those inventions and kindly improve your invention and then you file the patent for your invention. So first we want to conduct the prior art search to learn what are all the prior arts already available in the public domain. Because as academic fraternity, we know to search the journal publications. So when we are seeing journal publications, uh, we will miss a lot of information that is available in patent documents. Because there is a saying from World Intellectual Property Organization, 70% of information in patent documents is not all existing in the other documents. So kindly access these patent documents also when you are doing the literature survey so that you will get a lot of information. So based on these backgrounds, you develop your invention and you can file the patent application. So we will see the search here. Now I continue my uh, PPT. So is there any doubts from your side so far? Okay, uh, I think there is no doubts from your side. We'll move further. So once we do the search, uh, once we conduct the prior art search in the databases, 
after the uh, based on the information to be retrieved from the databases we want to see the patent application we want to draft the patent application and that we called as the provisional specification and complete specification so provisional specification in the sense it's a, like a temporary application so once we come up with the invention we want to file that temporary application in the patent office and it is to secure the priority date so as per india is considered who is the person first filing the patent application they will get the right if two inventor file a patent at the uh, somewhat 5 minutes before or after so who is first filing the application they will get the right so to secure the priority date we can file the provisional specification at the patent office and the patent office is providing you a timeline of 12 months so within the 12 months you can file the complete specification with the full details of the invention and also you want to give the claim section so normally we called claim is a major part of the patent application you couldn't see this claim part in the general publications but claim part is major important in the patent documents so you want to give the full description of your invention with the claim section when you are filing the complete specification so once you do the prior art search you can file the provisional as a temporary at when you are doing the initial stage of the invention at the initial stage of the projects you can file the provisional and within 12 months you can develop those thing and you can file the complete specification so you want to file this provisional or complete by these forms so these are the forms you require to file the patent applications first one is form 1 form 1 is application uh, which is asking that whether if you are from the institution if your institution want to file the patent application the institution is an applicant and the persons who are all working in the invention they are the inventors so you want to give who is the applicant and who are all the inventors in your application that is form 1 and form 2 is provisional or complete so you can file a uh, provisional as a temporary or you can file directly file the complete as per your wish after that you want to provide the form 3 that is a statement and undertaking so statement and undertaking means you want to say uh, i am filing the patent application in india there is no other patent application related to this uh, application in other countries so you want to give the statement like that if you are filing in other countries you want to say i am already filing in this country this is the patent number and next form is form 5 declaration of inventorship so you want to declare who are all the inventors working in that invention and form 18 request for examination so you want to request the patent office kindly examine my application so your patent application is not automatically examined you want to give the request for examination with the fees and final one is a important uh, form that is form 28 to claim status of educational institution as the education institution government is reducing the fee and they will come up with some specific provisions for the education institution so if you need those provisions you need to file this form 28 by claiming the status of education institution so these are the major forms you need to file when you are filing the patent application so what are the government policies that supporting this filing of patent application for the education institutions there is a now they are reducing the fee so as a education institution now they want to pay only rupees 1600 when they file in the e filing mode and examination fee is rupees 4000 so totally you want to pay 5600 when you are filing the all forms and you want to pay 5600 that's it there is no need to pay any more than that and you have the specific provision of expedited examination so if you need the examination in quick manner you can go through the expedited examination that is through rupees 8000 
so these are the major fees you need to pay so by that way uh, you will get the patent rights within uh, one or two years normally it takes three to four years but when you go for expedited examination you will get the patent rights within one to two years so these are the supporting from the government for the education institutions and you know that uh, patent is only for 20 years if you need to keep your patent alive for this 20 years you want to pay the renewal fee after the second year after the end of the second year you want to pay the renewal fee for every year so like from third year to fifth year it's rupees 800 from sixth to 10 for every year you want to pay rupees 2400 from 11 to 15 years you want to pay rupees 4,800 per year and for 16 to 20 years you want to pay rupees 8,000 per year. So these are the renewal fees you need to pay to the patent office to keep your patent alive. If it doesn't pay the renewal fee then your patent is get abandoned. And also you have the option to take off those uh, abundant patent because of non filing the renewal fee okay. so these are the fees you need to the patent office okay where are the patent offices i can file my patent in india there are four patent offices uh, one at kolkata that is the head office and one is the delhi mumbai and chennai as per your uh, institution is considered as in karnataka so the jurisdiction goes to the chennai patent office so you need to file the patent application at chennai patent office so based on the jurisdictions of the persons where they are living or where they are doing the business based on their jurisdiction they want to file the patent applications if you need to file in e-filing mode you can file this uh, in www ipindia.gov.in where you can file your patent applications okay once i file my patent application what are the process is followed by the patent office first you are filing the provisional specification that's a temporary application after that you have a time of 12 months so within that 12 months you can do the improvements in your invention and you can file the complete specification so after the 12 months there is a provision of withdrawal of application so you can withdraw your application that is within uh, 15 months of filing your first uh, patent application after that it is published so it normally takes 18 months so when you filing the patent application in the patent office so take example I am filing my patent application today at the April 22, 2022. So it takes 18 months to publish in the patent journal. If you need the publication quickly, then you can ask the yearly publication by paying the fee and you can get the publication within one month. But normally it takes 18 months to publish in the patent. But after that, you want to request for examination so the request can be given within 48 months from the date so normally when we are filing the patent application we are also filing the request for examination because our pipeline will be get faster after that the request for examination so there is a examiner in the patent office uh, specific to our domains like example the electrical engineering mechanical civil so specific to our domains, the examiners, they will examine our patent application and they will issue the examination report. So what is in the examination report? So the examination report can whether your invention is satisfies the criteria of patents, like whether it is novel or it has inventive step or it has industrial applicability or what are all the prior arts already existing uh, relevant to your invention and they will also give some objections like uh, from section 3 you no know, it is a duplication of devices it is the mirror arrangement of devices 
so according to section 3d this is a problem 3k likewise they will give some objections based on the pattern so after you receiving the examination report you want to reply for the examination report that reply must be within 6 months so in uh, patenting process the timeline is very very important uh, you want to reply within 6 months uh, but it can be extendable by 3 months by paying the fee after that there is no extension if it doesn't give reply then your patent application become abandoned so you want to reply within 6 months it can be extendable for 3 months after your reply the controller who is the head of the patent office they will uh, see your reply whether it is okay or not if there is some if they need some clarifications they will call you for the hearing so it might be a video conference hearing so after the hearing finally they will grant the patent so this is the process followed by the patent office and in this process there is no need of providing any prototypes and all so just the document only there is no need of any prototype and there is no any physical verification of your invention it is all based on the patent application what you filed in the patent office so finally you get the grant of patent so normally it takes three to four years to get a patent if you go in an expedited way it will take one to two years to get a patent for your invention so this is the patent certificate issued by the patent office which bearing the patent number who are all the applicants or inventors and when the patent is provided to you and how long you can use it so for 20 years these are the timelines provided in this patent certificate now the patent is yours now you have all the rights to sell your patent or license your patent to anybody and make money out of it as a owner of the patent is there any doubts from the participants so far um sir one doubt huh? yes sir the maximum how many inventor can be included in this list and there is uh, nothing like this any inventors and any there, is, there is no concept called first inventor second inventor in the patent application okay. all inventors are equal responsible Okay, and the number also no limit. There is no restriction in numbers. Okay, so one more. Huh? Um, if um, uh, what uh, I am planning for one uh, patent, I publish the patent, then uh, because of time consuming process, I am uh, going to Germany or uh, some other countries to uh, file the full patent. Okay. So what, what is the procedure for that? Any NOC is required from um our patent office indian patent office like that in, in was, you know there is a concept called when you are filing your patent application abroad without filing in india at that time only we need to ask the controller that uh, i need to file the patent application by filing form 24 but okay. when you are filing in india and when you are going to other countries there is no need of filing, in uh, filing and it is published that much i stopped and going for other country that is okay no Ah, that only is a so uh, I, once you filed within the 12 months you can go to anywhere no, within one month also it will publish ah, no. yes sir yes no issue uh, then we can immediately we can go for other countries yeah. and yes. uh, within eight months uh, some germany and all they are doing like that okay uh, that is also okay that is no yes. restrict that is no restrict no so if no you money, no. if you file the patent application without filing in india that time only you need to get the permission from the country uh, but one more thing is, uh, if I uh, same application I'm filing in Germany means yes, they will find that it is duplicate something like that. It will no, no, that it. is not that is not duplicate. So normally, uh, as per the patent is considered, patent rights are territorial in nature. Achha. So when you file in patent in India, you have the right only in India. If you need okay. protection in other countries, you need to file the patent application where hmm. you get the protection. So take okay, but the, I am filing in India today, so I hmm. also uh, need a protection in Germany. So I need to file the patent application in Germany to get the Achha. protection and in Germany. Uh, but uh, the same inventors has to be reflected there. We cannot change that one. That is correct, no? Yes, sir. Um, because sometimes uh, within that day, we're fighting with one person and removing that. That is not possible. Ah, because that, that is the reason we want to give the declaration of inventorship. 
acha 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 okay uh, who are all the inventors that's a problem so when we are filing a patent we will mm. get only three inventors so at the mm. sometime there is some i am also working in it so i am also want to come here so at mm. the time we want to include those persons and we want to say these are all the inventors working mm. in this okay sir okay. let us correct that thank you sir uh sir one more thing uh, only published here okay i am not uh, moving further if there uh, it, it means that uh, it is comes under copyright act or what it is no, no. public under copyright act no 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 it doesn't comes under copyright act it's uh, like uh, the public the publication is meant for opposition uh okay journals is different so journals is like when you were article is published it is for the knowledge so once it is published in the journal so anybody can read those documents and okay. they can use it so that is the purpose of journals but okay. when you come to patent so the mm. patent the purpose of publication is for opposition acha so acha they are publishing in the journal and they are waiting for if anybody is saying that oh, this invention is already done by me so it's mm. like the advertisement so when we are changing our name we will do the advertisement in the newspaper that this person is changing their name likewise the patent office is publishing your application or the thing of if any opposition is coming or not acha so acha patent comes under any copyright and all it's like a simple procedure so uh, what is the validity period and anything is there for that validity period anything is there for that no there is no no publication is like that there is no validity and all Uh, just for the it's just a office procedure uh, that means uh, anybody can copy that ha uh, anybody can use it howda yes. with reference or without reference they can use no as per the patent document they can that's uh, as per their wish no like uh, as academic when we are using somebody we are giving credit to them hmm so likewise they also want to give credit when they are using our uh, information no uh, that is the meaning uh, sir uh, i am just telling one month within one month i published okay, okay. okay. Uh, further i am not moving because some restrictions okay so i stopped that but uh, what is the meaning of that either whether that is it, that it is, is uh, not it is no worth in it because it hmm. doesn't qualify as a patent it's Correct. like you are filing the patent that's it uh because that, you, you want to qualify as patent it want to undergo an examination and after the examination you want to reply and all the hearing and finally they want to grant the patent no no that part i understand but publication itself somebody will stop that, and uh, uh -huh. they move on uh, no, no, that's a, that's a misconception with this because uh, when we uh, go with the journal we know as a publication we know mm. the term called the publication is a greater term as mm. per the journals are considered because Correct. when we say okay my uh, article is published in this journal and it is having some impact factor so mm. that is different but as per the patent is considered this publication is having no value it's a office procedure so once you file the patent application they will just show that this is the application we received and if there is any objection from the outsiders they can give the objection so for mm. that reason only they are publishing it so there is no value in the publication um uh, that is okay but how long it will be available in your website it will available always so you that are the inventor not uh, overwrite no it will show plagiarism and everything that is correct no uh, uh plagiarism is considered in uh, journals only but in patent there is no plagiarism are considered so they mm. just see the invention mm. they just uh, they doesn't see the wordings and plagiarism here mm. uh, they will see the invention whether your invention is new or not whether your invention is already existing in the pub domain or not whether uh, it comes but, under the patent or not that, that that concept it works plagiarism also if somebody overwriting this one after 2 years or something it is not possible no uh, because yeah it, it is not possible to get patent because it is already existing in already that existing in that correct 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 okay thank you everyone thank you everyone okay so we will move further uh, so far we will see the process we need to follow in india now we are going to see what are the processes we need to follow when we want to protect our invention in other countries so there are two routes uh, one is a direct or paris convention route 
so paris convention is an agreement which is signed by many countries so you we can go by the route so what is the uh, paris convention route is once you file in india you can directly file the separate patent application in different countries like example like germany so if you need to file patent application in germany you need to file through the paris convention route but this must be within 12 months from the filing date of the patent application so if we take example i am filing today in india april 22 2022 i need to file within 12 months so next april 22 2023 within that time i need to file my application in other countries this is called the direct route and next one is the pct route uh, pct route is a patent cooperation treaty uh, under a world intellectual property organization so this is the route uh, by a single application you can go to the many designated states in direct you need to file a separate application in each country but in pct route single application you can go to the different countries so that is a difference between this i will show you the comparison chart so as per the paris is considered first you file the local application that is india then within 12 months you need to file in the different different countries as per the pct is considered first you file in india then within 12 months you want to file in the uh, pct so after that the pct is carrying out some process carrying out process for the 30 months after 30 months it enter into the national phase what is the national phase means when you are filing the pct application you can designate the countries take example if i want to go to five countries so when i am filing the pct application i can designate so i want to go to germany china brazil us and all so once the process is followed in this pct then after the 30 months it enters into the every country and you want to follow the procedure of that every country to get a patent in those countries so as per the i will say the pct you can file the pct application in india so that is a receiving office bor ayen or you can file the pct application at the wipo that is receiving office international bureau so you can file in either mode you can file in india or you can file directly to the international bureau after that you want to give your records that is a form pct receiving office 101 by accompanying the description claims abstract of your invention in english or in hindi so you can give it in either languages with the filing fee so this is the form you need to file when you are filing the pct application so this is the pct application fee uh, international filing fee of 1453 us dollar and there is a search fee uh, rupees 2500 for natural person and rupees 10000 for others students academic institutions or other companies start other things and there is a transmittal fee so they want to transfer your application to that and for e filing if you file in the e file mode transmittal fee is no so these are the fees you need to pay when you are filing that form first one so after you filing the application with the search fee then the international searching authority they will do a search and they will issue the international search report and the written opinion written opinion in the sense whether your invention is suitable or not so they will give the written opinion and the international search report india is also one of the international search authority so if you file the pct application in india and say india is a search authority they will do the search and they will give the international search report and written opinion after that it is published so like a uh, normal indian patent so it is also published after expiry of 18 months when it is published it will all international search report and written opinion so by that way what is advantage here is based on the written opinion and 
return opinion we can come to know whether we can go to the other countries or not and if you are not okay with that search uh, report you can also opt for another preliminary examination by filing the form pct ipea 401 so by that way you will get the another examination it will be given to you so it will add a advantage to you like if you need the another opinion or another search report you can opt this international preliminary examination so after this examination is over now you have the report with you international search report and a written opinion is with you so if it is positive then you can go to the national phase so national phase in the sense if you designate five countries you can go to a different country and you want to follow their norms in this national phase application and it must be within 30 or 31 months so you want to follow the norms of the national phase and the written opinion search if it is positive then you have you have the opportunity to get patent in every country because the international search authority they say that it has all the possibility to get patent so it is very easy for the patent office of every country to do the search and they will issue the patent in the quicker manner so i think uh, you are clear with this international filing both through convention and the pct route any doubts we will move further so so far we see the patent filing process and now we are going to see how to draft the patent application with uh, some examples uh, we already learned that patent specification has two types one is a provisional and another one is a complete so provisional in the sense it's a temporary one and it does not contain any claims because we don't know at the initial stage of the invention we don't know what we want to claim it decides the date of application so it gives the priority to you that is a provisional specification but when we take complete specification it's a techno legal document because it has technical information and it claims what you are writing it is a legally bound legal information and it will specifically claiming the invention and it will give whole description of the invention so what is a description so description in the sense it want to reflect the novel what is a new inventor invention and what is the inventive inventor invention what is industrially applicable and whether your invention is patentable under indian patent law or not and as per the claims are considered it only give the legal boundary to you and when you go to your court like if for infringement proceedings infringement in the sense if somebody is violating your patent right you want to go to your court and when you are going to the court the what are the words you are using in the claim section that only give the legal boundary to it. so it only defines the myths and bounds of the invention and it is only used for the interpretation during court proceedings now we are going to see the contents of specification so you all know about the journal uh, structure like it has title keywords uh, description methods processes finally conclusion or interpretation inferences likewise patent application is having some structure so first is start with title then preamble then field of the invention in which field your invention falls next one background of the invention so what are all the already existing prior arts so when we are doing the prior art search we come up with many references so you can use those thing as the background of the invention and next one is the objective of the invention summary of the invention after summary you can do the detailed description 
claims, drawings, and finally you conclude with the abstract. So here the patent obligation is concluded with abstract. So I start with the title. Uh, title normally we want to give within 15 words and it want to describe the invention and it want to indicate the nature of the invention. So take example, uh, there is one writing instrument. So writing instrument is our invention, but what is the purpose of the writing instrument? Writing instrument for planting seeds, writing instrument for forming thermochromic handwriting. So it is having some purpose. So likewise, we need to frame a title and the title must be within 15 words. So after title, we need to know about the preamble, what you want to follow in the provisional specification and complete specification. Take example, if you are filing the provisional specification, you need to use this uh, line that is the following specification describes the invention. If you are filing the complete specification, you need to file this. The following specification particularly describes the invention and the manner in which it is to be performed. So these are the preamble you need to uh, write in the form two when you are filing the provisional specification or complete specification. So after this is the field of the invention. So field of the invention in the sense, you want to declare what field your invention belongs to. Because as per the field of the invention only, the patent office will classify your invention. So you want to declare which uh, type of uh, invention is this. Take example, this invention relates to, uh, relates to electric vehicle and particularly relates to battery management system. So likewise, you can give the term so that the patent office will classify, okay, it comes under electric and it comes at battery. So it goes into the battery classifications. Next one, background of the invention. So background of the invention, we already know when we do prior art search, we come up with many journal publications, many patent documents. You want to uh, give a summary. So this author says like this, this patent document talks this thing. Likewise, you want to give the uh, prior arts in the background and you want to differentiate your invention from the prior art. So what are all the disadvantages is have? What are the problems it is not solving? So what is the new solution you are giving in this invention? So by that way, you can get into this background of invention. And after that, you can give the objective of the invention. How, what are the positives of your invention? So how it is going to help? Like this, you can give the objects of the invention. And summary. So summary is uh, very relevant to the clients. So what you are given in the uh, first claim that is comes as the summary. So the whole of the invention by a single paragraph, you need to describe your invention. And if your invention have many features, you can include as the embodiments and detailed description. This we already know. We want to describe our invention detailly and we want to give the best mode of performing the invention. Uh, we have many modes, but we want to describe the best mode and it want to be sufficiently disclosed. You cannot hide the information. You want to give the all informations like what are the results you have in as a tables, graphs. And if you using what are the processes you are using, what are the materials you are using, what are the methods you are using, you want to give all the things and it should be well organized. And when somebody is reading that, they want to understand what this invention is. So after detailed description, we are coming to the major part of the patent document that is claims. So this only gives the legal boundary to you. And it normally starts with the preamble that if a single inventor is filing the patent, you can say I claim. If many inventors are filing, we can say we claim. So the structure of the claim, uh, it's like a, it starts with the introductory phase. Next one is a transition phase and third one is a body. So introductory phase is what is your invention? So take example, I uh, choose a battery. So I say a battery management system comprising microcontroller. Uh, 
I can say some sensors. So likewise, so what are the things it consists of? So likewise, you want to frame your climbs. And this transition phrase, so is very important in climbing the invention in the climb section. So you can use the two types of phrases. One is a open-ended phrase and another one is a closed phrase. So open-ended phrase is the sense you can expand the scope of the climb. So take example, uh, battery management system comprising. So comprising means it have lot of things. When you say consisting of, so it will close. So in examples like chemical compositions, I can say a drug consisting of 1% of benzene, 1% of another compound, biurnol. So you can say like that. So it will close the scope of the client. So you can use the open-ended phrase or you can use the closed-ended phrase. And your climb should be concise and precise. And you, the climb always starts with the broad one and it will narrow, narrow down after the second and third and fourth. So kindly avoid the words like thin, strong and all when you are writing the climbs. And as per the climbs are considered, there are two types of climbs. One is the independent climb and another one is the dependent climb. So as per the independent climb is considered, it is a standalone. So when we read that independent climb, we will come to the, okay, this is the invention. So here you can see the example, there is a pencil having an eraser fastened to one year. So by that way we know, okay, this is a pencil which is having the eraser. But when we come to the dependent climb, it depends on the independent and it will narrow the scope of the invention. So when we read the independent climb, it doesn't know, okay, eraser is constant, by what? So that is given in the dependent climb. So the pencil has climbed in climb one, wherein said the eraser is constant to the pencil on one end by an adjective. So it will narrow the scope of the image. So here you can take example. Uh, there is a chair. You say a chair comprising a seat, a backrest, and at least one leg. So why we are using at least one leg? Because it can have five, six, or seven, or eight, or less than that. So it will broaden the scope of your image. So when you are writing the client, you want to broaden the scope of the image. And second one, there is a fan comprising, there is a hub configured to rotate, there is a hub configured to rotate, and at least one wing attached to two set hub. So at least one wing. So it means it can have four or five. So we are broadening the scope of our invention. And as per the process, so when you are using some process, you want to clearly give the steps involved in it uh, so that it will be climbed in the climb section. So I will give you the example for the process. So as per the product is considered. So when we come up with the product, uh, so take example, there is one apparatus for cooking rice, comprising a means for folding rice and a heater configured to heat the rice folding arms. So likewise, we want to describe the invention when you are coming up with the product. And after that, we want to give the drawings. So if we already see the drawings, like it's like a, a line drawings, you want to give the line drawings, you doesn't give any photographs and all the patent office doesn't allow any photographs, you want to give the line drawings and it should be sufficiently uh, provided in the patent application and it should be sequentially numbered and you want to give the labeling when you are writing the descriptions. If you are coming up with process, you can also give the flow diagrams. And finally, the patent application ends up with abstract. So abstract is a concise and it should be in a separate sheet and it normally starts with the title of the invention and it should not exist 150 words. It should be within 150 words 
and you can include some reference numerals there if the drawing is needed. So these are the things you need to uh, give in the abstract. So the do's and don'ts are when you are drafting the pattern, kindly avoid the jargons and kindly use the terms which is defined, uh, which is commonly known words. And normally the pattern drafting is need of some expertise. When you are doing many drafting, you will not be doing expertise. And it's like a one-time chance. When you file the patent application, that's it. You cannot change after the patent is granted. So kindly use the first chance to file the patent application in a correct way. And you want to draft the claim to broaden the scope of the invention. So before drafting the patent application, first you need to understand the invention. What is the crush of the invention? And what are the other embodiments, other possible futures you can include? Based on that, you can plan the structure and you can do the search and taking the information and writing those information in the patent documents. Avoid unnecessary information. Uh, so far, we see about the structure of patent documents. So here I am giving an example like. Um, what are the terms, how to uh, real, real time uh, example. So that is a patent application by Kadi India. So this invention is like a patented plastic mixed hand paper. This is a patent application filed by the Kadi India. Uh, so we will see the description of the invention. So the title is a process of recycling of plastic waste. So it is within 15 words. So likewise, so this is a process, purpose is recycling of plastic waste. So likewise, we want to frame the title. After that, you want to give the field of invention. So the process invention relates to process of recycling of plastic waste to prepare a cost-effective paper and paper products. After that, summary of the invention. So summary is uh, very nearer to the climb. So I will go to the climbs. Abstract. So abstract must be within 150 words. In abstract, you can give what is your invention and what is your process and how your process can be used. So you can give the advantages or uses of your invention. So here they say it's a recycling plastic waste. It is used to media and made paper for carry bags and all. And it is eco-friendly. And by the present invention, they can make many other products like file cover, diaries, etc. So likewise, you want to frame your abstract. Now we are coming to the independent claim. So I will say this thing. So take example, if we come up with your process, we want to claim the process like this, like a process of recycling of plastic waste material comprising steps of what are all the steps. First step is, they shredding the plastic weight into small size. So they cut the plastic waste into small size. After that, they are giving the ozonation treatment. After ozonation treatment, they are adding 1% sodium hypochlorite and washing it in poacher washer. After this, they are treating these waste with the xylene 1%. After that, they are washing all the plastic waste with water. After that, they are feeding the mixture of plastic waste and half beaten cotton rags to the refiner at specific load to obtain a refined pipe. So likewise, when we come up with any process, we want to describe the process in a step-by-step -step manner. And when we come to the independent claim, so in, uh, in, in the claim, they say that it's a plastic waste, but what is the plastic waste? that we want to give in the dependent plan. So the plastic waste is low density or high density or polypropylene or polyethylene. So it may be anything. So you want to narrow down the scope. And there they say as the silane one percentage, but silane one percentage at 25 degree centigrade to 35 degree for one hour timing and the temperature. And that they are finally say that to get the pulp, they will plastic waste and half beaten cotton racks in said mixture 
what is the mixture? The mixture is in the ratio of 2 is to 8. And finally, they say the refined pulp is obtained. In the independent climb, they say yes, we will get the refined pulp, but that refined pulp is obtained only at this temperature, 60 degrees centigrade to 70 degrees centigrade. And finally, they say the refined pulp is used for making paper pulps. So likewise, when we are drafting our climbs, we want to say uh, our process clearly. And after that, we want to depend on different plans. So this is the structure to write the patent application. So finally, we will conclude that when you are going to file the patent application, you can file on your own as applicant, as an inventor, or you can file through any patent agents or other professionals. When you are going to do that thing, kindly sign the non-disclosure agreement with them. Uh, because non-disclosure agreement will give you the confidence that your information is not leaked to you. Because these are the confidential information. So kindly sign non-disclosure agreement with uh, the persons whom you are going to deal with this uh, patent filing process. And all. So kindly be inspired to innovate and protect your inventions under these patent rights. Uh, thank you from my side. Uh, now, if you have any doubts, kindly ask your doubts. And you can also visit our website uh, www.cpum.gov.in where you can download the resource materials. If you have anything to share, you can send a mail to us at cpum-dipp.gov.in and also you can follow social media handles uh, Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn, CPUM India to know more on this uh, IP. So once again, I thank you from my side and wish you all the World Intellectual Property Day on April 26th. So if you have any doubts, kindly ask your doubts. Um, uh, sir, again, Amudan. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hi, yes, sir. Uh, um, uh, sir, the, um, um, what my doubt is if I am working in uh, an institution or something. If I fi file the patent, uh, the ownership is for institution or individual? That's only say your organization need to frame an IP policy, like uh, how the employment policy is that if somebody is uh, working as a staff, they cannot do your job in other thing. I guess they have some policy. No? Like mm -hmm. for this IP, they need to have some policy and say that what are all the patents or what are all the IPs generated from the institute? The institute is the owner. Mm, but uh, uh, there is no, uh, but if it is not filed in institution name also, it will be ownership will be, if, uh, if policy is there, it will come uh, to ownership. If, yes, yes. If policy is there and if the patent application is filed in the institution name, at that time only the institution have the right. Uh, but individual's name. Uh, and if you file in the individual's name, then the institution is having no right on it. Acha, acha. So if it is, yeah. In, uh, no, institution name means, uh, can I understand if Amudan, uh, Professor, yes, institution? Sir. Yes. Ah, that, so when you, are, when you are filing in your name, like Professor uh, Amudan, when you are filing as an applicant, mm. as per the patent law is considered, what are all the names in the applicant category? They are the owner. Okay. So applicant is uh, college means college is the one. Ah, college is the one. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. Otherwise, a uh, person is the owner. Yes. What are the names you are given in the applicant category? They are the owner of the pattern. Uh, I mean, applicants uh, name. So there are two terms. One is applicants and another one is inventors. Okay. So if, what are all the names you are provided in the applicants? They are the owner of the pattern. Uh, now, what I am telling is, Amudan, this uh, inst uh, affiliated to this institution, or Amudan, we can put our house address also. Both things is possible. Ah, yes, in sir. that case, what is the thing? In that also, the name, Dr. Amudan is getting the patent. He is the owner. Uh, okay. Uh, there, is no wish, uh, there is no issue with the address and all. The name. Uh, address? Uh, okay, okay. Issue with address and all. What is the name? So, if you take example, applicant, uh. IAP. IIT is the but, 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 what, 
but we are uh, writing like this only you know amudan and after that college address we are no, giving no, no, no. Yeah, college that. address you are giving take example the patent rights is for 20 years correct sir. you can change the institution but correct. after the in that case yeah. what is the procedure ha ah, so that's the thing what are the name you are provided in the applicant they are the owner okay and to solve these issues the academic institution need to have some policy with them okay ha ah, mm. if any ip is generated from our institution our institution is the owner and the persons who are working there is the inventors so uh, one more thing uh, one more thing will come in the policy matters if the policy is simply a writing or should be recorded or it should be with the bylaws or it should be included in the uh, trust uh, deeds like that anything is that no, like no, no. that is not sir it's like a general uh, policy a like policy we can we have to record the policy in somewhere no ah your institution have some policy like how the leave policy how the travel policy likewise they need to have some policy when some employ uh, take example uh, if you are the employee of this uh, institution you need to follow this code of conduct correct so by this code of conduct they can say that when you are filing any patents or copyrights by from the institution the institution is the applicant and you are all the inventors and okay. when the patent is getting commercialized you will mm. be also benefited mm, mm, whether, mm. whether you are in this institute or whether you are in another institute that is no matter you are the inventor so mm. when it is commercialized you also getting benefited you also getting share from that likewise you need to frame a policy so if you need a policy our uh, cpm we are having the model guidelines so you mm. can download the model guidelines from our website So it will okay. show you how the ip policy might be and how to draft the ip policy okay the institution can have the policy if the policy is not uh, available uh, person can take the chance correct yes. yes if there is no policy then uh, we can't do anything so the person who is filing patent they are the one but policy should not be uh, uh, it is not mandated to register somewhere like that it is not ah, there is no mandate it's up to their uh, up to the academic institution interest but uh, if daily basis if they change the policy, uh, policy what is the uh, there is no meaning in this no 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 daily basis no. that only you were uh, basis, that I, depends on the person sometimes uh, policy as change per, yes, as per the thing i say as if it is a government institution as a university is considered so uh, they have some syndicate something so mm. they need to pass the policy in those syndicate and they say that uh, syndicate is approved this so uh, it's a policy so all the employers who is working in this university they need to follow this policy correct correct like, as per your institution if you have any board of directors the, or higher the government, the government bodies uh, uh. they want to pass this resolution resolution this correct policy from our institution so hereafter mm-hmm. who are the persons filing the patent or copyright from our side they need to uh, proceed through this channel like if you mm-hmm. have ipr cell you want mm. to proceed through the ipr cell mm. and the institution is the owner and you are all the inventors and mm. if any commercialization happen the mm. share will be given to all the inventors as per the agreement is considered correct thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much ah. so any other doubts from I will check the chat box in the doubts. Copyright essentially is very very important, um, and I I honestly believe that it is sector agnostic, uh, and especially in the media and entertainment industry, uh, we see the need for a lot of technical people across various uh, you know functions of filmmaking and content making. So uh, without further ado, let's let's jump right into it. Uh, I wanted to kind of uh, start this session by uh, you know a little bit of blue sky thinking because we're talking about talking to uh, engineering and technical students and they're like why are we talking about the media and entertainment industry what's in it for us and I wanted to kind of talk about this lady Hedy Lamar she uh, her invention got patented in 1942 and she was a very well known actor. 
back in the day and uh, she played a very very important role in world war 2 because she collaborated with uh, her partner and they came up with a uh, invention that actually could jam uh, radio synchronized torpedoes and um, you know the reason i like to mention this example is that an inventor is in all of us everybody can think original and uh, creativity and innovation actually is the bedrock of copyright uh which also brings me to my next example of alfred hitchcock so uh, i'm sure there have been innovations after this but these two examples are really inspiring because back in the day there wasn't enough communication there was enough uh, con- communication systems there was no internet and of course technology was still developing and uh, alfred hitchcock is a great example uh, of how to use creativity on screen because he himself was an engineer and he had a great vision for all the frames of the films that he made and what was very interesting about most of his films were they were thrillers and uh, he kind of uh, knew how to um, arrange cameras and other equipment to create a vertigo kind of effect when audience watches the film so uh, that 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 also is a is a form of innovation and it brought a new experience to the screen so for all of you uh, who are studying engineering or your like computer science uh, what i would urge you to do is really see what's happening around you technology is developing and we'll cover more as we go along but we must talk about the billion screen opportunity uh, while there are inventions that are changing different sectors from pharma to agriculture to every even telecommunica- uh, telecommunications what's really powering uh, the billion screens is india right we are the largest internet market we are the second largest cable television market we are also a mobile first market now this is great because uh, we didn't really have to wait for different technologies to come we jumped right into mobiles and today when you watch content on screen we find that the majority of the people are watching content right from their mobile screen we also have a uh, you know the largest english speaking population and the government is actively working on building infrastructure so tomorrow when you talk about experiences of content maybe in the form of news maybe in the form of uh, you know uh, documentaries or web series we are looking at great connectivity going forward and most technologies especially telecom pipes would be incomplete without content driving them right uh, we also saw that in the in covid there has been a huge explosion of digital uh, video and you know the numbers are right there on the screen Uh, i want to talk a little bit about business because we are here while we will understand the law and we will understand what copyright is uh, i want everybody to start thinking about commercialization about understanding the business angle of copyright because uh, you may have a great idea you may register your copyright but at the end of the day it has to if if there's no return for you as a creator then i don't see any opportunity of you know uh, Uh, of actually encouraging somebody to create a copyright so the impact of digital india we as we see is huge right and we see that uh, smart tvs are driving this uh, this uh, rise there's digital payments today which is making life very easy you can subscribe to any service you want uh, whether it's content or your uh, you know any uh, telecom package that you want to go for and the adoption of digital in covid has simply accelerated Uh, i also want to pause here if you look at the screen on the right you will see online news online gaming has really risen right and we're looking at animation and gaming as the next big category and in my opinion that's where technology and where people bright minds like you all can play a big role how are you going to really change and how storytelling can actually evolve uh, once you have technical know how so that's what gaming and animation and vfx is going to do in the future it's constantly using technology with creativity to bring new experiences not only to people who are watching content but also uh, you know in daily life when we are talking of smart uh, you know home automation etc uh let's also uh, take a step back and understand the business and this is very important because you'll know how copyright flows so um i know this is uh, you know i don't know if i can uh, you know if someone out there can tell me what your understanding of copyright is can someone tell me 
you all can uh, unmute yourself and and you know let's make this an interactive sec session <laughs> anybody okay so uh, when we're talking of copyright we're actually talking about an original expression of an idea and in the media and entertainment industry this travels through multiple screens so this is just to give you an example of uh, a single story or a single piece of content it first flows through right at the top of the pyramid you'll see theatrical that's that applies even to india and of course there are various other ways of monetizing this content whether that is through your ott services like netflix uh, sony live uh, you know and there are multiple of these services today or it could be in some markets which are not uh, very evolved there's still an existing home video market cable of course on television you can watch films you can watch your series so these are the different windows in which a single piece of content can flow not to mention there's also radio there's also your online music services where if there is a song which is part of your film then that also is an additional window of monetization now this is very important to know because for one piece of content that you create every time it travels through these multiple windows as a creator you get rewarded right you get uh, you know you get royalties or you uh, if you are the producer of the content then obviously you get a license fee as well for the same so that's really the opportunity of course today we are looking at you know convergence where a lot of people like a lot of films we saw during covid going directly uh, to digital uh, there's video on demand so more and more uh, the medium is becoming agnostic and in the future we are seeing a lot of contribution uh, from audio and experiential kind of uh, events uh, we will also i'm sure most of you all would have read podcasts are really growing so that's also an original piece of content and that's also driven by uh, copyright so this industry overall has a lot of opportunity it contributes a significant amount to the gdp uh, most people don't realize it but you know it it did employ 2.6 million jobs in the year 2020 when we did the study last and we are seeing increasingly people are subscribing to online curated content that's what occ means here and we are seeing a huge huge growth in revenue 159% revenue growth uh, is what we saw in the year 2021 just from this industry so every time you think of an idea or if you're working behind the scenes on vfx or you're doing uh, you know sound effects there's going to be a constant demand for such services and uh, you know i think that's where uh, you should look at this category seriously so which brings me uh, you know of course this the session is about this what is uh, copyright copyright from a legal perspective uh, can mean you know i'm not going to get into legal language but it definitely is a collection of rights which enables you as a copyright owner to do multiple things so for example you have the right if say you you're the producer of a film you have the right to decide where you want to distribute the film whether it will go to theatrical whether it won't go to theatrical maybe it will go direct to uh, digital you have the right to think of which territories you want to license that content you want to have uh, the release in 50 countries abroad for example issue copies means that yes when you're when you're giving it to another medium for broadcast for example you have the right to issue copies and pretty much everything from translation to adapting the movie so, so if if your movie is a hit and somebody wants to adapt it we are seeing a lot of south films being made into hindi and you know sometimes there's a slight story change sometimes it isn't but all of those rights are with the creator of the owner of copyright and it is a bundle of rights because when you look at a single film you will see there is music there is lyrics of a song there is a screenplay and sometimes the movie is adapted from a book so it essentially uh, copyright therefore is a bundle of rights and of course it governs literary dramatic musical works in addition to books and computer programs so uh, i'm happy to take questions at the end of this session but this is really the bedrock of what copyright is and the single takeaway from this slide should be that when you own a copyright you essentially inherit 
and uh, possess all the rights to do certain acts, whether it is to duplicate that film, distribute that film, monetize the film, uh, and basically give, it, give, give out licenses, uh, uh, you know, based on your film. So what does it include? Economic right. So what is economic right? Economic right is the right to monetize, make money, right? So you have the right to control distribution of a work. So for example, um, you know, Fox Star Studios many years back made a film, My Name is Khan, which went to over 100, you know, uh, territories across the world. So they essentially had the right to decide a strategy where there could be maximum consumption of the film, whereby they could reap the profits, right? At the same time, you also have the right to stop someone from duplicating your work, right? If there's piracy or if someone is translating your movie and making a Tamil film out of it without your permission, you have the economic right. So essentially economic rights are your right to monetize content as well as to control uh, the, you know, control your right in a way that nobody else misuses it, right? Then there's this whole other aspect of moral rights. Um, of course, that's your right to be acknowledged as the author of a work. So, for example, you decide uh, to write a book and you feel that this is in public interest. You say that I'm, I'm an academician. I want this book to reach thousands and thousands of students. You still have the right to put it in public domain or somebody else may say, fine, this is free to download, but you have the right to be acknowledged as the author of a work. This also applies to, uh, you know, for example, sculptures. Maybe you made a sculpture uh, for a particular organization. It could be a university or maybe, you know, even government. You do have the right to be acknowledged and you also have the right to control that work is not altered in any way by somebody else. So if you made a film which had a particular message or you made a sculpture, you have the right to say that there can be no mutilation or alteration in a negative manner, which could damage your reputation. So this is a very, very important aspect of copyright. There are two rights, which is economic and moral rights, right? Absolutely. I mean, of course, uh, we all know that there is no copyright in idea. So you may have an idea. Uh, let's, let's take an example. Um, person A and person B, both of them uh, think of, um, let's say, um, female infanticide as an idea, right, for making a film, they, they are trying to spread a message. But ultimately, each one would maybe have a different story, the theme could be common. So therefore, idea, there is no copyright in an idea, it's the expression of the idea in which the copyright exists. So from an academic perspective, maybe y'all are writing papers, y'all can write on a common subject, but the way you write uh, your analysis uh, or what you present could be very different. And that is something that you will have a copyright on, right? Obviously, uh, we know that, you know, plagiarism, for example, is, is a huge infringement of copyright, or you're taking somebody else's work and, you know, uh, making that your own. Uh, further on in economic rights, of course, you have the right to transfer. So I've given some examples here. So the content owner may agree to let someone use a work. So for example, um, Gone Girl, Gone Girl was a book. There are several other such uh, web series that have been made on the book. So the book author, can literally license that right to a movie producer. They can also license it to a publisher to publish their book, right? Um, producer may assign the music rights to a music label. Again, you know, you can decide for how many years based on what, what con you know, the money and every the contract that is agreed upon. And of course, licensing also means limited permission of usage. So say you're making a film and you're, uh, you're wanting to use a retro song. And of course, the, it's with new age actors, but you will still have to go to the owner of that copyright of that song and seek permission to use a clipping of that song or, you know, a, a small tune of that song in your uh, final work. Um, in terms of economic rights, of course, you may trade, uh, you may sell the rights to someone else who then becomes the new owner. So, for example, you're a, a production house or uh, you're an author, you uh, create a work you create a film or you write a book, you can entirely assign that right to someone else uh, if, if that is something that you're comfortable with. Uh, we see that very common in uh, television and mostly even in web series where you just transfer the rights, but again, depends on the owner of the copyright. If the owner dies, then of course, their heirs will inherit their economic rights. Now, this is very important. Uh, we find 
legacy stories on how people have written songs, albums, they've written books, and the royalties on them are still being earned by uh, their legal heirs. And this is fantastic because it means you're actually creating a work that lasts forever. And in a way, that becomes really an asset um, you know, most people don't feel that copyright and IP rights are actual assets, but they they are assets in today's world. And I think they continue to reap benefits, not only for the authors, but also to their legal heirs. Any questions? Okay, we'll continue. Um, this is a very important aspect of copyright. What are works, right? Uh, what are the classes? What kind of works have copyright in them? So obviously, original literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works. If you remember the earlier slide, I said copyright is a bundle of rights, right? So each of those rights are governed or are emanating from a work. So an example of, uh, say, a musical work could be a musical composition or background music or even like, um, you know, a tune to a song. Literary works, of course, could be script, books, lyrics. Artistic works could be photographs, drawings. Of course, it could also be sculptures, right? So these are the different kind of works uh, over which copyright exists. We'll come to, you know, who owns what later. But this is very important to understand. And this is this, this particular slide will give you a snapshot of why we call it as a bundle of rights. Because if you see a particular piece of content, it you will mostly see all of these works in it. Uh, especially if you look at a Hindi film or a Telugu film, you'll find that there is music in it. There's, you know, it may be based on a book. Or it could, you know, there's of course a script backing the whole thing. Cinematograph films, of course, uh, the examples would be web series, television series. We know this sound recordings is songs with or without lyrics, without a visual, right? So the left side is basically all the different types of works. And therefore, for each of those works, so if you look at original uh, literary, dramatic, musical, films, and sound recordings, the next question would be, okay, who is the author then in these cases? Again, this is extremely important to understand. If it's an artistic work other than the photograph, then it's artist. If it's a photograph, person taking the photograph, of course, that doesn't mean, um, if, especially in the case of photograph, artist, all of these works, if you are hired, as an employee, then the employer is the author of the work. So if you look at cinematograph, film and sound recording, who owns a film? It is the producer. Why? Because it is the producer that risks and invests in that particular project. He is the one who's responsible. At the end of the day, of course, there's a director who will choose uh, which music director he wants to work with, etc. But it is the producer that ultimately brings the whole project together. And of course, literary, dramatical, music, or artistic work, the person who causes the work to be created. Again, this particular person could completely transfer his rights. Uh, for example, if someone writes a musical and a film needs to be made on that, he may or may not decide to completely assign those rights to the producer who will ultimately make that Broadway musical say into a film or a web series, right? Um, copyright registration, I know that you all are going to be uh, learning about this more in detail, but I just wanted to kind of put it out there. In India, it is not mandatory to register copyright, but the only reason that everybody encourages uh, that you register the copyright is because you have evidence and tomorrow if for some reason if your work uh, is copied by someone else or if someone else uh, uses your work to monetize without your permission you have the certificate of registration of copyright as evidence it also creates a public record so it's much more easier uh, if there is any kind of violation uh, of your copyright. And of course, it prevents the misappropriation of work by other persons. So I'm not going to get into the details of copyright registration. You all will learn in the next session. But it's important uh, to understand the process and you know various ways in which uh, you need to go about it. Uh, so the next question is, of course, uh, if someone covered patent earlier today, uh, everybody, every copyright and every IP has a life. So uh, in India, according to the Copyright Act 1957, that's the law, uh, the, uh, the term of protection is uh, lifetime of the creator plus 60 years. 
from the beginning of the calendar year following the year of the death of the author. So it will be basically the lifetime, the age, the entire tenure for which a creator is living plus 60 years. And that year will be from the beginning of the calendar year after the author or creator has died, right? And if it is posthumous and anonymous or pseudonymous, then it's 60 years from the beginning of the calendar year following the year of first publication. Now, why is this important for you? Especially the second point. There are a lot of people who would choose to become a producer, right? Or you would want to make a film or you would want to make a documentary or you may want to write a book. So it's important for you if you want to create an adaptation of that work, once the term of protection of a work is over, it goes into public domain. When it goes into public domain, then you can adapt that work, you can recreate that work and it may not be necessary for you to then go back and pay the creator because the term of protection is over. So this is a very important aspect. Uh, we do not have, unfortunately, a library or any kind of list in India on public works uh, or works that are in the public domain. That is something probably uh, institutions like yours can get into or maybe a couple of instit academic institutions can come together and put that list together. So it becomes very easy for people to know what is in public domain. So you can start making remakes and, you know, um, adaptations of that work right a very very important aspect of copyright because you have the right to monetize you have uh, the the right to distribute and you also like i mentioned earlier in economic rights it also empowers you to stop someone from using your work so copyright infringement unfortunately has been or piracy in layman's term has become a huge threat for the industry and this may not be really a huge threat for big studios but for smaller production houses or smaller producers every time a show gets leaked and we see that happening increasingly in web series these days uh, earlier it was in th in, in theatrical uh, in theaters where people would record but we're we're seeing and you can see the numbers on screen it's a huge loss for the industry it's a huge loss for the exchequer it is a huge loss for the creator now i'll give you an example say a uh, you know a sacred games plays on netflix authentically and uh, there are songs in it assume that there are songs so as per the copyright act the lyricists the composers do get the royalty back every time that that particular piece of content is played. So, for example, if a film releases in theaters and later on it gets shown on television or various other uh, mediums, the people or the performers actually get royalties every time that movie is played again and again and again. That is the biggest impact of piracy. You are not really rewarding creators and it, it hurts the smaller producers. So uh, copyright infringement we're seeing has increased in COVID and there are various ways to deal with it. But from a legal perspective, what is copyright infringement? What is piracy? Now, this is not just telecasting a film without pay permission. It could be remaking a film without procuring remake rights. It could be addition of, say, a song from another movie in your film without uh, taking permission, copying a script without permission, which is why uh, I said earlier registration is extremely important because it creates evidence. And um, increasingly, we are seeing that unauthorized links through the internet. So internet piracy has been increasing. Um, there are various apps today where you can stream uh, most of your OTT content without permission. Uh, in the future, we may even see streaming devices entering this market where uh, it becomes very, very, uh, you know, a big threat because when 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 the illicit streaming devices or ISDs as we call them, these are devices which you can just plug in and it openly streams all your OTT content without you paying for subscription. So if 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 a service is based on subscriptions, that's their business model and that's being pirated. You're obviously looking at a huge loss there as well. Now, why is this extremely important? So one of the reasons why copyright uh, holders in India and the rest of the world are very sensitive about uh, piracy is that every time you download from the internet or you download a pirated content, 
it has an impact because we are talking about uh, crime syndicates operating uh, across the world. Uh, these syndicates do not work for free. They're not giving you that content just because you want to be entertained. There's always, uh, there's no free lunch as they say. So there is an entire crimeware economy every time a, a, a pirated content is downloaded. And the impact you can see on screen, this could be stealing of your personal information, bank and credit card information. Uh, it could be personal information that could be, you know, that could affect who your identity is, uh, locking a user's computer and demanding a ransom fee. We see that in small, medium enterprises, this, could, this may not affect you as uh, an individual. And of course, hacking a computer and controlling it to commit ad fraud. Now, uh, another thing that, 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 needs to be noted here is the social impact uh, imagine a kid uh, you know wanting to see frozen uh, goes on google and types frozen very very innocent move but she he or she is taken to then a website and most of these pirate websites do not have legitimate ads as well they uh, there are all sorts of uh, you know uh, maybe ads on drugs or you know adult ads etc which exposes a person who doesn't even want that information when he or she is downloading a movie. So misadvertising and you know exposure to certain things also is a huge impact of piracy, uh, which is why I'm saying it has a social impact. Um, we, we see from an impact point of view, uh, I'm sure all of you all have seen uh, Game of Thrones, but 9,986 torrents contained malware and there were 129,000 attempted attacks only for the final season. So you can imagine the kind of impact that copyright infringement has and therefore understanding what it is is very, very important. Uh, however, coming back to the sector and on copyright, uh, we are a sector that continues to be innovative. You will see in the next one or two years, more services launching, Lionsgate has just launched. Uh, you will see HBO Max, so more and more services will launch. Uh, we are a resilient in, in industry in that sense. And I feel there has been, there is no better time to be a creator. Um, creators who, you can even write you know, there are so many books today that are made into content. So there has never been a better time to be a, a creator. And also at the same time, understanding your rights uh, through copyright law. Uh, of course, we are also going to grow, as I mentioned earlier, because of the impending rollout of 5G and most businesses investing on the cloud. Now, uh, coming back to, you know, the innovations in this uh, sector, which, which, we are, which we are going to see in the, few, in the next few years. As you all know, we are, we are going to be in a world of metaverse and we may be, you know, entering an era where people want to experience everything they're doing in a holistic way. So it's quite possible that there could be new technologies which are invented for, say, music sharing in a community or creating a private gaming pod, you know, so there are a lot of areas where I think technologists and engineers uh, can work to improve the experience or, and also, of course, impact lifestyle. Uh, in a way, all of this is also tied to the media and entertainment sector because we're not only talking about film and content, we're also talking about gaming, animation, visual effects, a large part of it would also be what you do socially on social media. Now, one of the this is basically a framework. If you understand this framework, this is all that you need to know when it comes to copyright. So the first thing, let's talk about IP, right? The first thing, whenever you create an idea, whether it's patent, whether it's copyright, you need to create IP which delivers value, which you can monetize, right? If you can't monetize, yes, it will remain your IP, but then you know, you're not really, really making the full use of it. Uh, once you develop an IP, let me give you an example from a film franchisee. So say I make Spider-Man and the first time I release it, it the box office run, runs through the roof. And now I think that, yes, I think I can keep making sequels of Spider-Man maybe for the next 20 years. And we've seen that with Spider-Man and Batman, there's constant sequels. So you constantly analyze your IP, right? You constantly see uh, how you're adding value to the consumers. Do you have to change the characters, etc.? You strategize on if you, uh, for example, Spider-Man is a great example because Spider-Man over the years has become younger. 
to cater to a new audience of youth and also possibly because the adult audience today has uh, several other characters in sci-fi or the avengers to watch so strategizing building is very very important when you look at ip how can you keep reinventing your ip and reuse it and last but not the least we spoke about piracy what are the ways in which you can defend yourself knowing the rights of how to avoid someone from misappropriating your uh, copyright is extremely important. Let's look at a simple formula. So IP plus services plus licensing and merchandising uh, in at least in the Hollywood studio parlance is big dollars, right? So you, you develop your IP, you monetize it through various services. We spoke about multiple windows, etc. Sometimes these IPs, can be merchandise, you create merchandise. I'm sure you'll have, you know, you've seen the Harry Potter merchandise, the Avengers merchandise. So to give you an example of how IP economics really works is this slide, right? If you look at the 25 highest grossing media franchises of all time, they are highest grossing because they made use of their IP in a way they monetized multiple outlets from video games to merchandise, to box office book sales if you look at a company like disney through their parks and you will see in most of the cases merchandise is what brings them the maximum value so you have a film out every two or three years but your merchandise lasts forever because you know you the kids would want uh, you know kids are being born uh, they will uh, use merchandise your merchandise movie merchandise depending on the age that they are so the merchandise is always something that makes profits for the studio for many many years we saw that even in star wars we see that in avengers and and another great thing about merchandising is you're not actually in most cases you're not uh, making it yourself so you don't have to put up a factory it's just the brand value of your copyright that gets people to possibly put your logo on everything from lunch boxes to caps to clothes etc and of course toys uh, another great thing about uh, copyright is that whenever a film is made or whenever anything is shot in a particular location, you are creating some kind of, of an economic value in that particular territory. So this is an example of Lord of the Rings. It's one of my most favorite examples because Lord of the Rings uh, filmed for four years in New Zealand. And at that point of time, New Zealand didn't have a film industry. Uh, they didn't have a post-production industry either. But because of the location and because the studio decided to invest there after four years, when, when the film stopped, uh, when the production stopped, they left behind a great ecosystem of post-production artists, etc. In addition to that, of course, all of you all know when a film uh, is shot in a particular place, you see a growth of allied industry, catering, uh, tourism, for example, people watch something on screen and they say, hey, that's my next holiday destination. So while we want to understand what copyright is, it's also very important to understand the value of copyright in not only what it adds to a studio, as we saw in the previous slide, but also for a region or a country where that, uh, that film is shot. Let's look at also a great example. So whenever you want to create any idea and you feel that, yes, uh, this can become a great piece of work, I can own the copyright, you have to think about being globally uh, competitive, right? So Squid Game was watched 130, uh, 130 million across the world, watched it uh, in the first 23 days of release. It was the number one show on Netflix in over 90 countries. And this is also because of the efforts of the South Korean government to promote this. So, um, you know, while we're not going to get into governments promoting uh, uh, innovative work, but yes, as, as an academic institution, I believe you all do have an IP cell. Uh, try and see how uh, the intersection of patent and copyright works because uh, more and more, uh, as more and more films be, uh, me, are made and content is being made, we will need new technologies to bring that experience on, on, on screen. So that's a great sector to work on. And I think patents and copyright in that way can work uh, well together. Of course, uh, this, is a, this is a great Indian story, uh, Mighty Little Beam. Of course, we all saw that on television, but today because of Netflix, it has debuted across 190 countries in the world and 27 million households watch it. It's actually one of the best shows worldwide for preschoolers. So 
what does this really teach you it teaches you about being glo not only globally competitive but also thinking of universal stories and universal ideas which need not only have demand in your local market right you also want that idea to travel your invention to travel and and be used uh, across the world so um in the future what we see the value of ip um will be across various sectors uh, we are talking about high value jobs uh, we are talking about ip centric work and uh, you know i think because just from an infrastructure point of view and a great young population india really has the opportunity where ip can be promoted um of course from a from a macro perspective uh, what it really takes to promote an ip ecosystem there has to be obviously a regulatory framework which we do have through various laws but incentives ip and piracy awareness which is why i love uh, such workshops these workshops are amazing because it it kind of gives uh, students a chance to think of um, not only uh think about what copyright is or what ip is but also think of ways and means in which they can create something new and to promote an uh, ip ecosystem i think it has various different blocks but you know probably creating an ip fund across universities uh giving that initial funding for students to kind of you know really make use of their work will really really uh be helpful um of course bangalore is one of the biggest uh, you know startup hubs today as we know and um, i don't see a better place for uh, academ uh, academicians and students coming together to promote an ip ecosystem within your own institutions right let's quickly understand piracy content protection framework uh everything is interrelated you have the law which is the strong copyright le legislation what we are also seeing uh, from a piracy point of view see years back you know you would not have many hollywood releases or you would not have that much content but today there is a huge increase in the number of ott or online curated content streaming so one of, in a way that has helped people get access to content and also move away from the cultural shift ke you know i'm not getting access to this so i will download it right we obviously need stronger enforcement action that is unfortunately i don't know if anybody covered trademark infringement or counterfeit i think a lot can be done there and of course commitment from local stakeholders very happy to answer any questions you may have on this slide i didn't want to make it uh, very long because we have limited time and uh, of course um, we uh, just two days back uh, i ran a forum called creative first it's a great forum for academicians policy makers and industries to work together uh, i'm going to kind of also paste this link on the chat box for you all to ac access but we launched a book called copyright 101 it has great case studies on copyright for students uh the various chapters in the book cover how copyright uh, works in say memes if uh, in youtubers or uh, in news so i hope you find this publication very interesting to read i'm going to kind of paste it right here and uh, yes so that's my session that's an overview of copyright we can talk more i hope this is an interactive session i think i've exceeded time but i think do we have 5 minutes for question and answers it'll be great um so i put the book uh, the link to the book on the chat box and i hope you all find that useful it's a great uh, culmination of teamwork and um, i think that you know once you understood the overview of copyright and you read the book you'll understand more about what copyright is okay uh, uh, thank you for a wonderful session madam madam one small question can you hear me madam yes yes i can uh, um madam if copyright means um uh, simply can i understand like this if uh, plagiarism is not there it is uh, we can take the copyright like that we can un understand for writers so see plagiarism you know plagiarism is like piracy right so piracy okay. is copying someone's work plagiarism okay. is exactly that when it comes to books and academic work whether it's even an uh, a chapter from a novel fiction non fiction plagiarism is literally taking sentences of a person's work and reproducing it or reproducing the same concept so it is opposite to copyright because it is actually infringing it is violating copyright 
so plagiarism piracy are acts which violate copyright not protect copyright uh, no no what i am what i am asking is if i am writing something it doesn't have any uh, plagiarism okay i check the plagiarism yes. if the or yes. something uh, it is not access and it's showing it's uh, content is okay okay yes. then i can claim for copyright for that uh, work absolutely absolutely okay so i am not talking about any uh, figures uh, music and all other we are uh, writers okay we were writing some story or yeah. some content technically we are writing yeah. some things like that whether it is possible to take the copyright yes uh, if if plagiarism is not there we can go ahead no yes yes ma'am no. thank you yeah. It's a real great uh, session and very interesting. And Dr. Shashi Shankar here. I'm sorry, your voice is. I'm, I'm Dr. Shashi Shankar here. Yes. Right? Professor and head of civil engineering. Yes. And uh, I was uh, very much uh, impressed by your talk. And uh, whenever I felt uh, that I could ask this question, you had answered it. And uh, right. particularly, I can refer to the mighty little beam. when um, we infringed ourselves on the copyrights right in the theaters right when our daughters right uh, uh, they wanted that uh, cd correct and it was not available and uh, uh, it was 27 million households that uh, it is a legal figure and let me tell you there will be 100 million households with illegal figure so that was a very nice reference that you made it is true and uh, 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 another uh, copyright uh, this thing that i have seen is uh, the temples themselves you know like uh, making it say ms subalakshmi's uh, superabhatam or uh, you you understand that in tirupati yes, yes absolutely right so what do you say about it right uh, she is no more she is no more but uh, what do you say about it? So, anyway that's a god uh, that's a divine yeah, so see uh, i think you know uh, there are certain exemptions so if you look at uh, weddings for example or i i found on mistaken including uh, temples in the interest of public these cases are not considered as a uh, copyright violation although although if you really see the way the law works there should be uh, you know there has to be something that goes back to the creator these are exceptions in which have been made in the interest of public but i'm not you know it's 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 actually two different viewpoints i may say today no i am in favor of the performer receiving uh, their remuneration every time their work is exploited because you are also doing it for some kind of entertainment and gain right may not be monetary gain so in a wedding i'm sure it's more of okay entertaining the guests but if you really ask me i think it's a wrong practice and i think every artist should get remunerated or at least when they play it buy it from a legitimate uh, you know platform right play it from a legitimate platform so at least you have paid for that work would be my view great i am belongs to some institution okay okay um so how i can claim the ownership of mine or institution as the right to claim so oh, you know uh, it all depends on the arrangement technically if you are employed then all the work under you know let, let me give you an example i think news is the best example right i'm working for say times of india i'm a journalist and i make i write this huge piece of research work which is entirely my work but because i'm employed by uh, a news outlet that person becomes the owner of the copyright because it is my work is under commission but at the same time i'm sure today contracts are open and you can have a discussion with your institution that you know we can go 50 50 uh, it really comes down to the contract that you have your work contract but if you are working so it's considered as work for commission in most That's cases right. in most cases uh, uh, but uh, if uh, Uh, one more thing is, he, he, I face the uh, same problem in Indian Copyright Office also. So what they are given in the address, I am uh, my name is there. After that, if I put the institution address, they lost no objection certificate. If I put uh, the same content, if I put my house address, they will not ask anything. Okay. So what is that uh, meaning? I am not understand. Same content only. I am working okay, but 
in the address line, if I put Damudan belongs to some institution, means then the procedure is different. They are asking, okay, you okay, attach your that, certificate. That could be, yes, sir, because that could be but they want clarity and on whether this is going to be, are you working for commission in the sense, are you employed by someone and you're creating some work? So obviously then that person owns the copyright, not you. I'll give you an example. Say I'm a producer and I hire a battery of writers for a web series. Say I'm Applause Entertainment. Uh, you know, they made Scam 92. So they, mm -hmm. they kind of hire a couple of writers. So those writers are still writing for me under an employment contract. I will finally own the film or, you know, that web series. So maybe because they want clarity, they would, I would really, I mean, I, I can share, I'm sure they'll give you my email address. Very happy to uh, help you offline on this. And, you know, if okay. we can sort, yeah. yeah. One more thing also. Yes. So nowadays you see artificial intelligence is the high five technology. Okay. Uh, you see a lot of websites, uh, even I am also knows that is yes, uh, can I mention or not? I don't know. Websites are there. Uh, whatever you are expecting, you can give the title and some keyword. If you give, it will write for you. Okay, even uh, how many words you want, how many pages you want, the, for that they will charge, but it will not produce any plagiarism also. Beautiful content, beautiful high fi formal language, informative language, so many things is there. And email, whatever it is, the content is, you can write for 100 pages without any mind involvement in it. Completely artificial intelligence will do. Right. I know the websites also. So that right. kind of situation, how the copyright will protect it. So uh, worldwide, and I think in most cases, even in India, we consider the owner of the copyright to be an actual person. So that I think has has set its residence in law. So from that perspective, you cannot say that a particular AI is the owner of a copyright. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. No, if, if we uh, write like that using AI, the ownership belongs to the person only. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, today, for example, if someone uh, makes an AI, which basically um, say it, it kind of converts all uh, very popular, uh, say, animation work, which all of us know belong to some studio. If it simulates that and it creates a new work, that doesn't mean that that new work is a, a new creation. You're still going and expressing something which was originally belonging to the owner of a particular copyright. If you can give me an example of what you're seeing on these AI sites, I can probably help you better. But if I take someone's work and I do an AI, AI simulation on it and it creates a new work. It is still derivative work. It, it does not mean that it, you know, it is new work where the original copyright owner uh, will rights will cease to exist. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. VC Matthew has have extensive work experience for more than 12 years in trademark copyright and uh, design prosecution and handles both Indian and international clients. His practice focuses on ad advising on all aspects of um, trademarks, copyright, and design prosecutions, um, including the clearance searches, application strategic development, and uh, management of worldwide trademark, copyright, and design portfolios. With prior, uh, with prior experience in handling matters in, the, in, the, in this field, his experience and focus is to assist clients with commercial and holistic solution to the numerous intellectual property problems. He had handled clients across various industries, such as apparel, luxuries, um, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, FMCG, technology, and retail and regularity appears before the five trademark registry in India with an in-depth knowledge as it's working. So thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much for your introduction. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen right now. Uh, good afternoon to one and all. So I am. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Great. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, great. so Ma, Lohita Ma'am has actually given you quite an insight into copyrights. Um, the one thing that I think uh, you all need to maybe do after the session is uh, look at it from the perspective of your daily lives. So from the time we wake up, 
uh, the newspapers we read, the music we listen to, the podcasts we listen to, YouTube videos, OTT content she already mentioned, movies that we watch using Netflix or Prime or Disney Hotstar or whatever we do. All of this entire uh, industry surrounds us and is actually a part of our day-to-day lives. So we've already seen what is copyrights and a couple of other things regarding copyrights, including a slight gist of what happens in infringements. So we're going to go slightly more deeper into certain aspects, especially regarding the filing procedure, uh, how to file, the things that you need to file, and a couple of other things as well. So let's start off. Uh, a couple of these things you may already have touched upon, but I have to touch upon it nevertheless because it leads into what we want to actually touch upon in the end. Uh, the features of copyright law. It, it was historically written, uh, linked to written literary works. Um, there was no problem actually till the printing press was created. After the printing press was created, what you found was that people would actually make copies of works. Uh, literary works was what it was at that particular point of time. So I could make, basically make more copies of books that were there in existence. Before the invention of the printing press, I could only uh, create one copy. That was it. It was very difficult to recreate. So that kind of opened up the copyright industry. It is an inherent right, which basically means that from the time of its creation, it was in the author. You don't have to specifically file an application at the copyright registry. Uh, in the prior presentation, there was a mention as to why you need to do it, and that points to infringement and evidence, which we will touch upon later. It is not the right to copy, but it's the right not to copy. That's why it's copyright. There's also something known as copy left, wherein uh, a copy left work is basically one which is there in the public domain, which the author has agreed upon to be used for other purposes. So, so you do you can basically take that work and use it without uh, having the fear that you've infringed someone else's copyright. So it's it's called the copy left uh, movement. Uh, there are a lot of write-ups about it. There's even a website about it for those who are interested. It's copyright is basically a law which governs the literary works, musical works, artistic works, audio record and video recordings. So this is something again that we have touched upon. The owner of the copyright is obviously very, very important. Even in the prior speaker, she had mentioned that the owner uh, is someone who is of paramount importance as per section 17 of the Copyright Act. If it's a photograph, it's a photographer, the person who takes the photograph, who is the owner. If it's a cinematograph film, it's a sound and a sound recording. It is a producer. If it's a literary work, it is the author. If it is a musical work, it is a composer. And if it is the artistic work, it is the artist. With artistic works, uh, photographs, we have a slight problem which is coming about nowadays in the form of what is commonly known as non-fungible tokens or NFTs. People believe that if they purchase the NFT, they also purchase the copyright which vests with the NFT. That is not so. If you purchase an NFT, you the rights of the particular work, actually the IP rights belong to the creator of that work. It does not belong to you. So. There are works, of course, NFTs way where in the copyright is also transferred, but they are far and few between. So when you're purchasing your NFT, understand what you're purchasing. You're just purchasing a digital image or a digital version of that work, which may have 10 copies or which may have a single copy. So that is what you're purchasing. You're not the actual copyright owner of that work. This is very similar to a purchase of artwork and paintings. Uh, in the real world. So if you purchase paintings today, if I go to an art gallery and purchase a painting today, I don't get copyright over the painting. That right vests with the artist. It does not vest with me. Except in certain cases where the copyrights also shift ownership to me. So be careful of what you're purchasing, especially nowadays with NFTs gathering a lot of steam and a lot of people actually purchasing and getting into that particular sphere. There are obviously exceptions to what I just mentioned in the previous slide as to ownership. Some of the exceptions as to the uh, as to the author being the first owner of the work are one where any of the works, literary, artistic, or dramatic, were made in the course of employment and contract of service or upright apprenticeship, and there the employer becomes the owner. Uh, Amanatha, sir, you had raised a query regarding the NOC. Uh, 
uh, in your work when you apply for copyright. So when you applied for copyright, uh, when you mentioned that you were part of that particular institute, that was the reason why you asked for a NOC or a no objection certificate. We shall go into why an NOC is required slightly later on, but it was required as per law. Uh, if you had created the work in your individual capacity and applied for it in your individual name, like you mentioned very clearly, they were not asking you for it. So that the main reason being that if the author and the applicant of the copyright are exactly the same, you will not be asked for an NOC. But if there's a difference, let's say you are the author, but I'm the person who's applying for the copyright, I will be asked to submit an NOC from you, from you, the author, saying that he does not have a problem with me filing that particular copyright. The reason being that you are the actual owner of the copyright as per law. However, I am the applicant of it. Therefore, I now am stating that I have ownership of that particular right. Therefore, the NOC kind of or no objection certificate kind of certifies that you don't have a problem with it and the work now rests with me. Similarly, with a photograph, a painting, a portrait, an engraving, anything which is made for valuable consideration, the person who commissioned the work is the owner. So if I commissioned a work within, wherein which I tell an artist, please paint something for me so that I may adorn my office cabin with this particular painting, he no longer is the owner of that work. I become the owner of that work because I have given him a valuable consideration for a work which I have commissioned. Uh, in government service or anything which is created, it belongs to the government. And if you, and as far as musical works are comp uh, concerned, the composer is the owner of the particular work and not the singers or the artist who created that music. Moving forward, um, the subject matter, what we are looking at today, copyright filing. Now, copyright filing is a pretty straightforward process, unlike trademark filing, where you require a whole lot of requirements, especially regarding uh, data views and documents, validating the data views and so on and so forth. The process is very simple. It's, it's I would say, a four-pronged process. The first is you file your copyright application. It will get examined. If the copyright office believes that there are objections to be raised, they will raise the objections by way of an official letter, and they will inform you of the same. You may file a response to this uh, official letter if it is issued against you. The response is then reviewed by the copyright registry, and if they are satisfied they allow the application to go forward and a certificate of registration is issued. If they are not satisfied with your response or have further queries, then a hearing, oral hearing is held at the copyright registry to tackle this uh, and clear the doubts on whatever query they may have. Subsequent to them being satisfied, the certificate of registration is then issued. Now, a couple of things to be understood here. Unlike the trademark office, copyright filings, yes, can be filed online. However, once it is filed online and the fee which is paid, you need to send a copy, a hard copy of the application is filed along with the filing receipt and copies of the work, three copies of the work to the copyright office, which sits in Dwaraka in Delhi. So the copyright office is actually a part of the trademark office in Delhi. So they sit basically together. The geography recommendation office is also in the same premises. So this was not so. The copyright office earlier was based inside Delhi rather than in Dwaraka, which falls in Delhi and CR actually. But they have subsequently been moved under the Ministry of Commerce and hence they've moved to the building which is occupied by the trademark registry and the GI registry. So this is important to know that you need to submit a hard copy. In trademark law, when you make an online filing, there is no requirement to submit a hard copy to the copyright office. There is a reason also for this. Uh, it is not something which is draconian in nature. Yes, maybe our, the copyright office's online portal is not up to the standards which are there internationally in certain jurisdictions, but it is also because certain works cannot be uploaded completely. I'll, to give you an example, let's say I was producing an entire movie worth two, two and a half, three hours, and I was filing for it. It is not possible for me to upload the entire thing onto the online portal. 
technology allows us to do a whole lot of things like this how was the copyright office also has limitations there are server limitations at the back end therefore that is why they request that the hard copy be submitted at the copyright office this can be submitted by a courier uh, that is perfectly uh, permissible because you have to understand that our copyright is already filed now as far as the examination is concerned the examination report or the official letter if there are any objections are served to you via email earlier it was that a hard copy used to come to you but we no longer have that process and we have moved away from it today being world environment day world earth day it's a good thing that we're moving away from the service on use of paper uh the service or the objection letter is sent to us via email it comes into our inboxes at the time of filing your application you have to submit your email id hence that is how they get your email and they send it via email to you you can submit the response on the online portal by uploading it once you prepare it convert it into a pdf attach your annexures and upload it so it's, it's a very simple process a hearing the hearing unfortunately is not virtual there is no virtual platform for hearing the uh, doing the hearing currently the trademark office has it the patent office has it but the copyright registry does not have it unfortunately so for conducting a hearing one unfortunately has to be present in person either the copyright holder the applicant or through his attorney has to be present at the copyright registry at the scheduled time there is a future obviously wherein we are going to see hearings being done virtually because the other ip offices are doing it therefore it is not to um far fetch to understand that the copyright registry will also soon start virtual hearings this will help greatly because when you have only the copyright office sitting in one place in dwarka you cannot keep traveling to delhi to do hearings it, it's an unwanted cost and increases expenses as well for the applicant therefore this is the way forward which i believe will come through sooner rather than later the certificate of registration which is issued it's not an e certificate it is still a hard copy which is issued uh, it is sent across to you uh, a copy of your application which you have filed in hard copy will be attached along with your certificate uh, the statement of particulars at least they will be attached with your certificate um, the certificate acts as excellent evidence and we will go into why it is excellent evidence and why it is important when we touch upon the infringement issues as well moving forward to file the copyright so what do we require to file this is easy to understand but we need to know what is required we often as attorneys face a problem when it comes to the sub, uh, getting of nocs from clients many a time client stage we don't have an noc we don't know who created we don't know who made it we don't know the person who did it so we always get stuck at this stage and that's why the number of copyright applications are actually not as high as the number of patents the number of trademarks in india today additionally obviously considering that copyright is an inherent right not many people go in for the filing of that particular copyright the requirements that are required you know that you require when you file your copyright one is you need to have a title to your work so a title is a name that you're giving to your work so if i have a painting i could call it beyond imagination so that's the title that i give that painting right so that's the title of my work musical works are easy the title obviously is the name of the song or the name of the movie so on and so forth name address and nationality of the author is required like i stated the author could be different from the applicant in a copyright work therefore you need to be upfront and submit the name address and nationality of the author if the name address and nationality of the author is different from that of the uh, person who is applying and noc will require to be submitted like what uh, amanathan service asked for you have to submit whether the work is published or not what do you mean by publication so publication basically means the minute the work goes out and is put out there for everyone to see it is published the minute the work is created and i let's say i publish or i sell a book i i write a book and i sell it i have published my work the minute somebody writes about my book and saying that and conducts an interview with me it gets published so commercial publication is what is meant here so be very careful that uh, if you are publishing your work 
make sure you keep records as to where the work is published because this is another place where we get uh, stuck at clients do not know where the work was published first uh, if you have published the work you need to give the name address and nationality of the publisher along with the year and country of publication as well so make sure you have records uh, very carefully maintained regarding this particular issue uh, often clients do not keep it and they are unable to file their copyrights mainly because of this reason and if it's been published an noc again is required from the publisher that he does not have a problem if you go ahead and file your copyright the noc is a very simple document uh, it's it's a four or five line uh, document there's nothing much required in it it basically says that the person does not have any objection if you the xyz go and file the copyright for this particular work title so on simple right uh, people word it differently this is just for your understanding and if there subsequent publication is made then obviously need by it is and nationality of the publisher of every subsequent publication which is done now obviously there might be numerous subsequent publications are done so you don't have to give all of it but try to give ample amount if it has been subsequently published so when i say subsequent publisher there could be a first person who's published and there could be a second let's say one newspaper published my uh, rather one publisher published my book and then a second one did my digital copy of my book for e ebooks you know which is sold on amazon then that will be the second publication or the second publisher so i need to give details of both and i need to give nocs from both as well so keep that also in mind the last two points is where most people get stuck at because they are unable to provide nocs they don't know who created if it's an artwork they don't know who created the artwork uh, the artwork is usually created nowadays by companies who give it to advertising agencies to create the work so they give it to companies who create digital logos for them and they supply it back to them um the noc is not required from the advertising agency rather it is required from the person in the advertising agency who created the work so if you are a business owner and you're getting your logo or some copyright done by a third party make sure you immediately get an noc from them from the person who is worked who's working there at their agency who has done the work often there are situations where uh, when we or rather when they come to us to apply for a copyright it could be years later and they are unable to find that particular person who created the work but he is no longer in employment there so it is as a good practice always good to get that noc and keep it on your file you may not file the copyright today but that is fine at least the noc is there with you so another good practice which one needs to follow this is how the website of the copyright uh, registry looks at uh, what i will do at the end of this session i will share my screen as to the website and i will go over the website as well that will give you a good idea as to what is there on the website and what one can do on the website uh, as well uh, so this is the um, copyright office website uh, the logo on your left on the top the c with the orange and green that is a very recent logo of the copyright registry it was created uh, maybe around 4 5 years ago uh, when the copyright office wanted to you know redo themselves and you know come out as a modern office rather than the old archaic practices which they had so they came out with this logo to kind of give it a fresh look so this is a very recent logo actually it's, it's not a very old logo at all um infringement now this is where um the copyright filing becomes very important the reason for the filing becomes important we often find instances of infringement the prior speaker uh, rohit touched upon uh, certain instances of infringement where um in the movie industry especially that she touched upon where where smaller producers of smaller movies are affected to a large extent now infringement occurs across the board in, in many cases i'll give you an example of what What we were doing during the pandemic as well, which will give you a better idea uh, on a case, actual case basis of what had happened. Infringement of copyright is basically doing an act whose exclusive right to do is conferred on the owner. So if you are the owner, and if somebody else does an act, or uh, rather he exercises a right which actually you should exercise, he is technically conducting infringement. So infringement is actually touched upon in Section 51 of the Copyright Act. infringements can be tackled in two ways either by filing a civil suit or by filing a criminal suit 
filing a civil suit is pretty straightforward. You go to the registry, I'll go to a higher high court, file your civil suit, say that so and so party has you know infringed your rights. The courts take a look at it. If injunctive relief is to be provided, they'll provide you injunctive re relief. If not, the matter will go to trial and it'll get settled a couple of years from now. Okay, that's a pretty straightforward process that most of you know about. The criminal proceedings are slightly different. In criminal proceedings, it basically becomes state versus the infringing party. Uh, the Copyright Act provides under Section 64 uh, powers of search and seizure. This power is provided to the police officers above a certain rank. Uh, this is quite an interesting part because this is what we use, uh, especially when we want to take action against counterfeiters. We believe that uh, deterrence is a good thing. Uh, the deterrent effect or the philosophy of deterrent effect is something which is a part of what uh, law is and the jurisprudence of law is all about. How it particularly works is uh, I, uh, as a complainant representing my client, would go to the police and submit a, a complaint stating that uh, I have found a particular set of people or person selling uh, certain goods which are counterfeit. The packaging on the goods, which are of course artistic work, uh, is copyright under copyright law. I have the copyright for the same. This is the certificate which is given by the government of India saying that I am the copyright holder. And I would submit all this along with my complaint at the police station. The police would then have the power to go to the premise of that particular party, search it, and if they do find infringing products bearing my copyright, they could then seize that product and uh, put it into the evidence at the police station. The infringer would be charged under the relevant laws and FIR would be cut against him. Uh, these goods would obviously be produced later on, many, many years from now in court, uh, when the matter does come up. However, as far as we are concerned, X amount of goods have been taken off the market. They have been seized and they are in police custody. We have caused a commercial loss to the infringer. He or she may suffer crows of losses, which would affect them monetarily. And there is a case also now against that particular party. So this is how we as attorneys tackle infringements to a large extent, which happen in the Indian market today. During the pandemic, uh, there was interesting scenario wherein there was no labor. Many companies do not have labor to produce goods. So I was representing, uh, rather we were representing uh, Maggie noodles and Magic Masala. Uh, we had the artwork which was filed as copyrights. Therefore, we were able to initiate action against infringers, uh, the counterfeiters basically, who had stepped into that vacuum because there was a demand for Maggie noodles and Magic Masala and such kind of products, but there was no supply because uh, companies couldn't uh, supply to the level that they had prior to the pandemic because there was a lack of labor. Uh, the infringers all throughout the pandemic were trying to supply in the middle and then fill this vacuum. And we were able to take action all during the pandemic only because we had copyright certificates in our favor for the packaging. So uh, we had filed for the packaging in certain portions of the packaging as uh, copyright and got it registered and be able to take action because of this. So, so these are instances where one can take action. These are instances of how one can take action also against certain parties. We also, uh, the past, when I uh, was working many, many years ago, we were representing an American clothing manufacturer who was not there in India. But their logos were being copied by uh, numerous parties. So the first step, we went and got a copyright registration done. On receipt of the documentation from the uh, copyright office, namely the uh, issuance or certificate of registration, we then managed to take action for the next four to five years on the basis of that. We kept taking action against infringers and kept seizing uh, numerous amounts of clothing, uh, which we were then asked to submit to the police station. So this is how we use copyrights to our benefit to protect and enforce rights which accrue to the right holder. That is why it is important to 
file for a copyright expressly because if you do not file for it then you are in a position where in the later stage if you want to enforce it you will not be able to enforce it it's difficult to you may not go on the trademark law if it is possible and so on and so forth but you will not be able to take criminal action especially which is incidentally cheaper than a civil suit and also faster than a civil suit in certain instances so one needs to ensure that you uh, understand the importance of filing a copyright and then take steps accordingly okay. uh now we'll go on to um the copyright website yeah so uh just let me know if you can see my screen on the uh, the copyright website please so can you see my screen yes sir Okay, great. So this is the website of the Copyright Registry that you see in front of you. To the left, you will see e-filing of copyright applications form 14. So this is how you technically file your application. So when I want to register my copyright, I click on this and I go on. I have to log in and you know do what is required to get my copyright registered. Uh, okay, to open another another one. Yeah. Um. you can also change your particulars so let's say after filing your copyright you your company changes its name you can get that particular uh, detail recorded here by filing a change in particular request uh, you can also renew uh, rather you can renew it for your copyright society which is something different there are societies which are recognized statutorily under the copyright act uh like the phonographic uh, society and so on and so forth which basically protect the rights of right holders so uh if you have to renew your right license to be a copyright society you can do it here you can find the status of your application so if it is a new application it is easily possible uh, the minute you click on status of the application there will be a box which will open up you will have to put in your diary number and when you put in your diary number uh you will be able to view the particular and status of your particular application uh please note that this is very rudimentary unlike the trademark office where we can view a whole lot of things uh the copyright registry's website is not so advanced so you have to work with the parameters which are there uh old copyright applications they are still not on this system currently that is a huge problem that we are facing or have been facing for the last many years and we have made a lot of requests to the copyright office to get these old applications and old diary numbers also put into this system but it is going to take a lot of time because there are a lot of logistical problems at the copyright offices end as well so new applications easily possible old applications slightly difficult so if you are checking uh the status of an application sometimes you may not get the details it might be because it's a very very old application the diary number is very similar or exactly similar to an application number of trademarks it is issued at the time when you file your copyright so the minute you make your payment your filing receipt will have your diary number so just keep that in mind uh work awaited application is basically let's say you have not submitted copies of your work at the time of filing you will then be able to submit it by clicking here putting in a diary number and uploading the work uh, applications for hearing would come up here and so on and so forth the rest are this basic uh, knowledge uh, documents that have been put up like workflow frequently asked questions and so on and so forth uh that is not to be uh, nothing to be dealt with there uh, notices are basically all the public notices which have been issued by the copyright office in the last so many years Uh, if you look at the notice that you see here, 18 February 2022 was the last notice which was put up. It is good to keep a tab of these notices because there are a lot of changes which may come about which are put up here. So sometimes, if you are an ardent copy copyright attorney, it is for us we keep a tab of this because a lot of things come up here which affects how we work. And um, if you are filing for an artistic work, uh, and, and this is very important. if you're filing for an artistic work prior to filing for the artistic work <coughs> you have to obtain a search certificate from the trademarks registry so uh the search certificate is an important thing uh to get from the trademarks registry prior to filing it at the copyright office for the for the artwork at the copyright office uh, often we find applications which are filed without it and what happens to those applications are they get stalled 
till the uh, search certificate is submitted. So it as good practice is better to submit a file for the search certificate initially, get it from the trademarks registry, and then subsequently file for your copyrights. This will enable that objection not to get raised. And if the objection is not raised, the copyright will get registered very fast. The time period for registering a copyright from start to finish, it takes around six months and everything is in order. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, therefore, if you're able at the start itself to provide all the documents, it is a very simple process. Like I mentioned, a four step or four prong process, sometimes not even a four prong process, because once you file your application, there is no objections. It just goes directly to registration and the certificate of registration is issued. Thus, it's a two step process. So ensure everything is uh, put in when you file the application, everything is in order thus enabling you to reduce both the timeline of receipt of the certificate of regist uh, registration as well as over uh, not getting any objections from the copyright registry side if you do not get any objections then if you're employing an attorney you would not need to expend more money as well so this is something to, it's, it's also cost saving for all of you if you look at it from that angle so in a crux this is how one goes about filing a copyright uh, you've understood what a copyright is, and now you've got a gist of how to file the copyright. It is not rocket science, trust me, it's a very, very simple process. Uh, you could try it out and you could do it by yourself. To create an account on the Copyright Registry's website, you do not require a digital signature. Uh, this is something to keep in mind. Unlike the Trademark Office's website where you need a digital signature, you need to get uh, an account uh, set up and so on and so forth. The copyright office does not have such an artist and uh, processes at all. It's a very, very simple process to create the account and file it. You don't need an attorney to file it as well. Law allows you to file it as an applicant at the copyright registry as well. So in a crux, this is what the filing of copyrights is all about. I'll now open the floor up to questions uh, which are there or which you may have. No matter, sir. It was a very nice day uh, for that. And uh, uh, especially, you know, for the cinema world, right? Uh, uh, you are seeing the KGF2 is uh, getting almost 280 crores per day. And um, don't you think that uh, this copyright violation could have already started? Because every day, you know, crores of rupees like that. Uh, is uh, right on. So, so yeah. So so um, initially, um, I think Lothar Mam also touched upon it. The leakage of movies was a major problem that was there. The minute that movie was leaked, I mean, I remember when I was young, uh, movies used to be very expensive to go to. So <laughs> I, I was also one of those people who infringed copyrights by downloading movies. Okay, so we used to download movies using. Uh, P2P uh, software like torrents and so on and so forth. However, if you look at the movie industry today, you would see a little bit of a change now. With OTT content being there, uh, cinemas not being so expensive to go to, you could get a ticket for 200, 250 rupees now for the morning shows, even 150 in certain places. Okay, uh, The movie industry, the infringements have actually come down. Uh, the younger generation or the generation after us what they are doing is they're just waiting for the movie to come on OTT uh, service and they're able to view it. So if you take an example of the movie 83, uh, 83 came out in the theaters uh, a month or so ago. And now it is on all uh, OTT providers. I think Netflix and uh, Disney Hotstar are both carrying the movie 83 currently, if I'm not mistaken, or was it Amazon Prime, one of these two. Anyways, so I just had to wait a month and another movie is there for me to watch. Therefore, we are seeing a slightly reduced number of cases as far as movies is concerned. Same with music as well. Uh, with the number of streaming services that there are today, there is no longer a need to download music or download movies to watch them or to hear music. That requirement, that need has come down because of the availability which has opened up. So today I could actually buy the original track for 100 rupees or 50 rupees or 20 rupees in certain cases, like in Apple Music and certain other places, I could even buy it for 100 rupees if I wanted to keep it with me. So 
that has changed or rather helped quite a bit. This technology has helped quite a bit to reduce it. With KGF, yes, there might be infringements on the dark work, which might be happening there. But movie producers, what they're also doing nowadays is that to ensure that no losses occur from such leakages or such infringements, the rights are sold much before. So the rights to the theaters are sold, the music is sold, the OTT content provider is already set. So basically, even before the movie is released, money is already made. So that has also greatly helped quite a bit, sir. Very, very fancy. Um, sir, myself, sir, Amudan. Amudan. Yes, sir. Um, my, my question, question is, is um, sir. Hello. Can you? Can yeah, you? I can hear you. I, I can hear you, sir. Um, so my question is, uh, uh, yeah, if there are any any uh, page restriction, restriction is there for? For uh, copyright? No, uh, uh, literary work, there is no page restriction. So if you're filing uh, for a literary work of a book, if, the, if there are 100 pages, file all 100 pages. If there are of the manuscript, if there are 200, file all 200. Nothing stops you from doing it. You are actually, you have to do it. Um, you may not be able to upload all of it because the backend may have a, a, a constrictment regarding the MB size. So you may have to compress it and upload it. However, since I mentioned that you have to submit the original to the copyright registry, send three copies of the original work to the copyright registry in full. The only time where we do not submit all of the work is um, when it comes to computer source code. <laughs> so for an algorithm, uh, for a software, Sometimes we don't submit all of it or not all lines of code because reason being that if we submit all the lines of code of the software to the copyright office, it's public domain. Anybody can access it and then we would lose rights over it. So we ensure that certain lines of the code are not there, rest we submit it. It's just practically uh, uh, for protecting commercial interests. Uh, what, um, uh, sir, what is the minimum page required? So there's no minimum page required. If your manuscript is of one page, file one page. But you have to submit your work. If you if you do not submit your work, then you will definitely receive an objection. Your, your work is a part of your copyright. I mean, they need to see what you are claiming copyrights over, what you want copyright over. If they cannot see that work, then they cannot give it to you. So uh -huh. there is no minimum requirement uh, of any uh, page numbers that you need to submit. But uh, oh, one more thing is, okay. one more thing is, uh, we are technical people, okay? So I am uh, drawing some circuit and giving explanation, uh, different uh, explanation for the circuit and uh, about the uh, circuit. So it will contain drawing plus letters. So that kind of situation, how to handle? So, uh, in your case, uh, your most of the literary portion is only explaining the drawings, correct? Ah, yes, yes. So, what you are going to file for, you're not going to file for it as an artwork. You're going to correct. file for the entire document. So, it'll have the drawings and it'll have yeah. the explanations of the drawing. So, maybe there, were, there are 10 drawings on 10 different pages with, you know, summary explanations of each of them as to the processes and so on and so forth. The entire yes. thing will be filed as a literary work. Put it, uh, bring it onto a piece of paper, print it, uh, whatever, bring it on a piece of paper <laughs> and then yes. submit it as a literary work to the copyright office. Or uh, if it's an architectural drawing, submit it as an architectural work. Okay. So both two can be combined together in a single page also. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Means That's drawing, right. plan, and explanation. That's the question. Yes. Uh, that artistic is Yes, artistic works mostly touch upon stuff like logos. So if I have, uh, let's say the Nike logo, the Swish logo, the tick mark, which is there on your shoe, that could be filed as an artistic work, you know, uh, or uh, the packaging of uh, Maggi noodles or uh, any other fancy packaging, which is there, the entire packaging and could file or the packaging for, let's say, any of these chips packets. Uh, roughage lays or whatever we, we could file that as artistic work so the entire packaging can be filed if you want to and get a copyright protection over it
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amudan, for giving this opportunity to me. And um, at the first outset, I would like to thank my honorable management, Dr. K. Ramakrishna Paramahansa, sir, for uh, giving uh, this great opportunity uh, to conduct the webinar on patent and copyright filing on this day, that is 22nd April 2022. And uh, also, I thank uh, my director and all the other management uh, right, uh, profile, like, uh, particularly our executive vice president, Rahul sir, who has been the kingpin behind this webinar, and uh, also uh, Monica madam and uh, Gita madam. Right, and uh, other uh, right, uh, otherwise, uh, right, the most important person is the IP right uh, in charge of the uh, college, that is uh, Professor Modi Mohan, and also our, uh, Amudan, Dr. Amudan, who has taken a lot of interest in this. So, uh, and it is right now my duty to give the word of thanks to the resource persons who have contributed to the success of this entire uh, session. And particularly, Momita Gorai, she has uh, been a very, very great speaker today. She's the assistant manager of SIPAM, right? And uh, she has uh, clearly talked about uh, Thomas Alva Edison versus uh, right, uh, Elisha Gray and all these things, and Alexander Graham Bell. So how things have mattered in their lives and including the improvement of old setup and the existing ones. And uh, also she has chronologically established uh, how the patenting laws right, have come into existence in India right from 1859, that is the Act 15, to the latest one, right? Uh, and of course, uh, how the markets have been affected by advertising and uh, uh, the monopoly granting of 20 years shares, dis uh, right? And disclosure by patentees of the technology specifications, docs, attached, etc. And also the claims and uh, getting a protection from legally. So she has established all these things in a very nice manner and also the distinguish between invention and discovery. Momita has clearly given an example of penicillin and uh, then how invention and discovery are two different things. And also, right, uh, there's a biocompatible material she has talked and the neem and haldi and the other things and how things are not patentable, like the silicon implants are not patentable, surgical apparatus are not patentable, mathematical algorithms are not patentable, cinematography is only a copyright and not patentable. So all these things uh, has been uh, clearly enunciated by our Momita uh, Gorai. And uh, thank you, Madam, for such a lucid uh, uh, disposition of the novelty aspects and the industrial application aspects and the inventability aspects as per the section 21 of the right uh, the patent act thank you uh, thank you Mavita Gorai. so the second speaker was uh, a very very uh, great speaker dr yan subramanian sir and his assistant manager sipam right who established the difference right and uh, the pct and of course, uh, the and uh, patent filing processes he dealt with, with Section 3 of the Patent Act, right, with his five years' experience in the field, right. And uh, of course, uh, he dealt upon the prior arts and the draft applications and the filing, right, of 30 uh, right, uh, relevant forms that he talked about on the Google patenting. He then uh, eSpaceNet and InPass and all these things he clearly just uh, brought about and uh, the Indian iPass also he gave with uh, lucid examples which uh, all of our students and faculty could understand easily, uh, especially the Boolean syntax and the truncations and the proximity 
and of course uh, he dealt with the priors and the provisional and the complete specifications and after 12 months right uh, what happens the statement undertaking then the declarations and the, the right and all these things and the request with the fees that is stepwise form 3 form 5 form 18 starting with form 2 so he dealt in a very clear manner and also said that the expedition is also possible with uh, another fee of 8,000, right, for examining it uh, early, right? And uh, all these things uh, have been uh, clearly right dealt by Dr. Yen Subramanian with uh, examples, which our uh, faculty and students could understand very well. Thank you very much, sir, Dr. Yen Subramanian, for this uh, lucid uh, kind of uh, deliberation from your side. And uh, a lot of things to just uh, keep on telling about uh, Dr. Yanis, and um, it's so, such a great, uh, great topic. And uh, Lohita Sujit is uh, another speaker in the afternoon. So uh, Lohita Sujit has been uh, the right, senior director and the copyright and digital economy right at Motion Picture Association, Mumbai that uh, represents uh, right Disney, Netflix, and Warner Brothers, and NBC Universal, and uh, all these things, you know, represent uh, the, the great quality of the powerful woman in IP of 2021. Right, uh, we are grateful to you, Madam, for uh, making this so much interesting. And you started with the Hedy Lamar, 1942 actress, and the World War II right uh, celebrity and jam the radio signals and uh, Alfred Hitchcock was an engineer himself and uh, how to use the creativity on screens and arrange a uh, camera to create vertigo effect. So this is something which uh, we right had to relearn from uh, Madam Rohita Sujit. Then the powering a billion screen effect is something which we just uh, right uh, could not uh, believe and India is the largest internet mobile uh, first market and the second largest cable TV market too and the largest English speaking population too and so uh, right it's a great opportunity here in this particular field right and uh, the copyright is one thing that uh, right no return as creator right then there is no use of the copyright so smart TVs and digital payments online news online gaming so, uh, Lohita Madam has uh, clearly right uh, talked about and uh, then uh, when you own the copyright, what happens in the economic rights and to monetize and what happens, right, uh, and with an example of my name is Khan, right, which uh, was uh, right uh, exhibited in 100 countries and made a lot of profit and monetize the content and control the author of the book, right, uh, to reach thousands of, right, the students, how the author of the books can, uh, right, uh, right, mismanage things or manage things. So all these things, and the, including uh, the example of Gone Girl and uh, legacy stories, see, she has uh, lucidly, right, dwelt upon, and the original dramatic literary music of 1957 law, Right, and the copyright registration of India is uh, not mandatory, she has established. And of course, when the man dies, the lifetime plus 60 years, right, uh, after death, uh, is the right, uh, uh, the copyrights, right, uh, that would be right affordable to the person, even after death, 60 years would be there, right, and uh, Lohita Sujit. We are really grateful to you, right? Because of the kind of uh, uh, examples you gave, including the sacred games and uh, right, the, the, how the crime syndicates work and the hacking of computers, the 5G and the cloud effect and uh, the Spider-Man. And particularly, it was interesting to me when you said about the mighty little beam, which uh, myself was, uh, Right, uh, had to appease my daughter, correct, and uh, 27 million households from Seattle to Sao Paulo, right, have visited this particular uh, movie, and uh, not not only in India, and uh, but at the same time, 100 million households have uh, done the copyright violations, 
and the support of course has to be given for the copyrights and the strong copyright uh, legislations and increase in uh, legitimate services uh, right the requirement of it and the enforcement section you have deliberated very nicely madam rohita sujit we thank you from behalf of the students and the faculty of the afc engineering college thank you rohita sujit right and of course uh, the other speakers of course in the afternoon right and uh, particularly right the uh, last person was uh, the matthews correct and of course we see matthews right and uh, he is a group head of the ip the fox mundel solicitors and advocates so he is a man who can punish people correct and for violations and he has got well years experience too in trademarks and copyright and design prosecutions and the worldwide trademarks and the fo he focuses on assisting clients to the numerous ip challenges they have in the apparel industry luxuries retails and regularities and uh, of course uh, the copyright filing procedures he has initiated very nicely and after printing press right right he started with the example of the printing press and opened up copyright industry see another uh, agreed upon to be used as the video recordings the musical works nft purchase and the ip right right belonging to the creator of the work all these things he has uh, brought out in a lucid manner and also touched upon artworks and paintings and with the exceptions any of the work of the literary or the artistic the employer also could become the owner so this is uh, something which uh, is a very interesting thing and uh, anything made for valuable consideration the artistic work commission right and government can be the owner and the composer of the music can be the owner say for example ttd and the examiners and the objections hearing the issue of the copyright in a nice flow diagram he has initiated and how to send the hard copies of the application to dwarka delhi and the ministry of commerce and the world environment day and world earth day how the online portals right uh, are not uh, right uh, up to the standard it could improve a lot copyright applicants of course uh, you have to give the title to the work and the name and address in a proper manner then the work uh, is uh, published or not you have to reveal then the infringement she talked about the accuser right and especially the civil suit she talked about the right, criminal suits and search and seizure section 64 and of course uh, advertising of designs so he has talked about so during the pandemic how he faced the, the problems with the magic masala and the maggi noodles and uh, the american cloth example no, not in india of course and took action against the infringers right of his personal experience ms matthews has uh, given from the point of his personal experience and uh, to undo and uh, redo the things and renew the things how the website right will have to be exploited he has clearly right initiated thank you matthew sir for such a nice and uh, right uh, elaborate uh, session on uh, a very interesting topic and i thank all the other uh, right uh, people who have helped us and particularly right uh, dr amodan sir and all my faculty right who have contributed to the and the heads of the departments also who have contributed to the success of this great program we are all uh, really upbeat uh, with such kind of a program and uh, thank you very much uh, so thank you and uh, thank you all we'll close this session